close enough to six o'clock on uh, well, Monday, June fifteenth. Wow, I can't believe it. Um, so, Susan, I'm going to go over who's online here. Okay, right. Okay, uh, June 15th select board meeting. We got a bunch of folks online. Plus, in the room, we have four select board members. Uh, one member, Roger Audet, is also on the line. So we have five total: uh, Brian Shackett, Dave Gagne, Roland Bovine, and Susan Bartlett are here. I'm Ron Rajensky, town administrator. And online, I think I see most people's names, so I'm going to call you off. And then if you don't hear your name, just uh, announce yourself. Mary Waltz, Gail Dusso, Michelle Bailey, Green Mountain Access Public TV, and then Scott Griswold, and then a last one is 760-9205, whoever that is. Uh, Ron, that's me, uh, Jack Wolf from the Fiber Committee. Thank you, Jack. There you go. That's everybody in the room. Okay. Um, uh, glad everybody's here. Probably I'll get to sit outside and make it be nice sitting out on your lawn right now. <laughs> um, do we have any changes to the uh, to the agenda? Um, oh, two. It's uh, Ron. I thought we should put on because uh, it's not on here. The uh, <clears throat> just Kim's information about the first tax payment, whether we want that on COVID yeah. time. Yeah. Number twelve. COVID time. All right. No, no. That's the that's the use update. This is when people should pay this. Why guess we put it on? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. I'll just add a note there. Yep. Alrighty. Um, is there any general comment from the public or folks here for um, uh, for specific items? Hi, Susan. This is Brickett Bailey. Um, I'm here. If there are any questions about number four, yeah, along okay. with my wife Michelle. Yep. Okay. And Kim Moulton just called in, so she's monitoring. Okay. There you go. Back to Susan. All right. Let's start with. Um, with, uh, NIMS, the Ambulance Service Agreement. Michael Rooney. Hi, Michael. Hey, Ron. We're just starting the meeting, so Susan Bartlett is running the meeting. Great. Great. Okay, so who's Ron for the... Actually, we've got... We've got NIMS and... You have NIMS, Scott Griswold's online if you have any questions oh. on the ambulance. Who's... Is Roger... Well, yeah, Roger Adet is the liaison to NIMS. Yeah, basically all you have in front of you is the contract for the um, 2021 year, which was approved at town meeting. We are asking everybody just to sign a copy and send to us so we can stay away from as many people with all the slight boards we need to visit. That, that, that seems like a perfectly reasonable request. Um, but I'm on in case anyone has questions. Right, any questions? Um, Roger, if you look at it, do you have any questions? No, I haven't. It's all been voted in at town meeting, so. Okay. No, I, I yeah. think they're doing a great job. Well, thank you. We're, uh, it, it's good to have you around. I mean, uh, in my house, it's even better when we don't need you. <laughs> uh, let's see. So I guess I need the to most, sign. Uh, I'm sorry. What? I make a motion to sign the contract. Second. Okay, we've got a motion and seconded to sign the contract. Um, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. We're all set, Scott. We're going to sign and out to you. Okay. You just mail that to us, and we'd appreciate it. And if you have any questions on anything, thank you. And we're um, struggling with our budget because of call volume down, but it seems to be picking up presently, and we are doing uh, COVID testing and COVID transports and those are really helping out the budget because of the nature of the call. We get paid quite well for those. 
Hey, Scott, just because you mentioned that, um, were, were your types of services eligible for any of the money that came through? We've got 300 and some odd thousand on the PPP program. Okay. Of course, we're hoping that will be a grant and not um, simply a low interest loan, but we're preparing it as if it's going to be a low interest loan. We got 60 some odd thousand dollar grant from the state of Vermont. So with those, it's okay. Um, call volumes coming back initially, nobody was driving, so there were no car accidents, there was no electric Carol. elective surgery, so there was no transport from hospital to hospital. Um, that lasted about eight weeks, but again, that's coming, and as long as if the PPP program is a grant, we'll be well set. Gotcha. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, let's see, the next thing we've got the Lowell County Sheriff's Department contract. Is anybody online for the Sheriff's contract? Lawyers? Yeah, I think, I mean, it's, it's the same thing really as NIMS. It's all it's voted on at, at, uh, at the town meeting. We just need to, I assume it's going to be the same thing. We just need to sign it and get it back to them. Make a motion to sign the contract for the Lamar County Sheriff's Department. Second. Okay. I bet you want to stay. Yeah, okay. All, of, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? And Dave's abstaining. Okay. Supportive, but sustained. <laughs> not, not for any negative reason. Uh, so that takes care of them, right? Yep. Okay. That's it. Um, the next you'll, you'll see the, um, um, we got a, uh, and I, I brought it in, a request from the residents on, um, and I know Brickett, you're here, on uh, Eden Street. And one of the things in the Better Connections Grant, they talked about um, one of the options for traffic and variety of things in the village. Was to close that street to have it be a have it be a dead end, so that you can't come in from 15. They tried that before, did they? Oh, no, there was no trucks down there. Yeah, they. No trucks. <laughs> yeah, no trucks. Right. So now they're seeing that it's and um and they again they send us and I guess you know Brickett, I don't need to, I'll, I'll let I'll let you make the sales pitch, but it was one of the things that we might look at. And what we have is a request with a petition signed from all folks that are that live on the street to just to see how it is, to not do this as a permanent, but say, okay, let's close it for three or four months and see how it works. Yes, what uh, I'd like to read it. Want to read it? Or, yeah. Brickett, do you want to read the petition or do you want me to? It's Ron. Yeah, go ahead and read it, actually, and, and that way it's clearer there. Okay. Uh, this is dated May 30th to the select board. And there's, I think I count 18 or 19 signatures. Uh, most of them, everybody's from Eden Street. Is that 100% on Eden Street, Brickett? Correct. Okay, thank you. Dear Select Board, the undersigned would like to ask the Select Board to consider temporarily dead-ending Eden Street where the street meets Route 15. Access to Vermont Route 15 from Eden Street is getting increasingly difficult and dangerous given the steady stream of vehicles due to the roundabout. Also, vehicles going up and down Eden Street noticeably travel over the speed limit. Allowing a temporary dead end would provide an opportunity to, opportunity to study the impact of traffic flow into and through the village. It will also allow residents on the street to try out a new traffic pattern and access Route 15 at alternate locations where there may be better sight lines. Thank you for your consideration. Please let us know if you have any questions. So this has been discussed for many for many years um, by a lot of people, and we figured this would be just a good time because uh, we have noticed uh, all, all the residents have noticed the speed at which people are driving the difficulty of getting back onto, you know, the main road now. 
Um, and given you know the future um, construction that's going to be going on down in the in this street, we're going to have to dead end it anyways. So it seemed like a prime opportunity to let's start sooner and put up a temporary barrier there um, and see how that's going to affect things. And if we decided to keep it longer, um, one of my concerns would be, of course, plowing. And I think that there could be a solution because there's a corner of the land on the field that's actually owned by the state and it's not owned by my parents um, that we probably could utilize, I imagine, with permission um, to make a turnaround. Um, so anyways, that's the gist of it. Um, yeah, and I, I talked with Steve as I got I got out of the plowing and I um, I told Mark French it was it was coming up and his first thought was well let me see with the plowing, how do I and how do we need turn around and, and he, he kinda he mumbled to himself for three or four minutes and he said, No, I said if that were closed permanently, we could figure it out. It wouldn't it wouldn't present a major you know, you would have to have some place to turn around, but it sounds like you figured out there's some state land and you figured that out to do a turnaround. And, and a place to put some snow. All right. We all know about that. Somebody's got a sewer line that goes right across that state land. I know who that is, Brick. 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 It. I, I would, I'm sorry. I would. Uh, I would um, definitely probably want to talk about that before we get into it because that's my line. Yeah, but I'm talking about if we do it permanently. And they just want to try it to see what it's like, like say going to the fall. This isn't a permanent. This is a, this is a trial. Are you going to worry about snow flowing? Hmm? You don't have to worry about snow flowing. Well, well, that's right. And then, and then I think really what it is, the residents will see if they really like it and decide, and everybody agrees that this is a good thing to do. That's when you have to get into those things. Rick, what uh, Roland Bovin is saying is that. Uh, um, he has a sewer line that goes through that area. It's owned by the state, yep. so it could raise some concerns about uh, how it's handled in, uh, for the turnaround and if it's kept plowed, then uh, frost could get in there and affect his uh, sewer line of uh, numerous reasons. So that will have to be researched probably first, I believe, is what he's saying. No, we need to. Oh, absolutely. No, this is just a this is just a request for temporary. So let's try it out. I, I completely understand if there's there was going to be, you know, further, you know, concerns and and comments stuff that we hadn't thought about. So I I completely appreciate that and and think that we can, you know, figure this out in the future if we decide as a community that this is going to be the best thing. I, I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying let's try it for temporarily. Sure. We don't need to cross that bridge and do a bunch of homework because people may decide that they don't want to do it. So, right. <clears throat> we'll try it for, for say, um, well, probably you know reassess it, let the school year start, and see how it works with with that kind of traffic, and it, you know make a have a pretty good idea by then and see what happens with the school traffic going in because that would be that would be different traffic patterns and things in a lot of different things. And then if we decide that it looks like something we want to do permanently. That's the time when we have to sit down and figure out. Yeah, so I, I think, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, is your concern is if they can make a turnaround up at the end of the street? But we aren't talking about doing that now. Okay. Okay. This is just we're just seeing they're not doing anything right now except closing the street. That's all we're doing. Okay. That's it. <laughs> but That's how, it. how many more people? The next street down the we want to do the same thing there. What happened then? Well, well, then we would, they could come in and talk about it. Well, I don't know. Maybe there isn't enough to on shutting that down. Well, <laughs> there's one way to find out. <laughs> it, you know, it seems to me when 100% of the residents on a, on a street ask for something like that, and it was one of the options that was said, here's a, here's a possibility of something that you can do. You certainly know the way the traffic's that, you know, that the line of sight, you got to see it coming out from your other side of the road. You know, it's certainly not the, it's certainly not the best. So I'd say, let's, let's try it for, for July, August into September and see, and see how it goes. And, and we can always stop, 
sooner if, if you know, again, it's just a trial and see how everybody feels about it. A couple of finer points to this decision. One is the uh, state of state of Vermont will require a permit for anything in their right of way. And they were I talked to Jim Coda from District Eight. So other than signage and a change of because right now people he was thinking that and I don't know if this is a requirement, but you'd have a change of pattern saying no. Uh, side road closed ahead, so people on their GPS, which won't will show a road, know that the left turn or right turn is not available to them. So he, those are at least two signs on Route 15 slash 100. The berm or whatever is going to go to stop people from going, because you really can't allow anybody to go through. You have to do something substantial. It's kind of our problem. We have to figure out what's going on. Uh, so those are just a couple of the little details that will have some a little bit of added cost. The other thing is you would have a agreed upon start and end. If you can, so it's whatever time frame it begins on this day, ends on another, and we can figure out the front part. Yeah, just like um, folks, if you have time, you need to move your phone. We're getting a lot of feedback. Yeah, please check your mutes if you're not talking. Thank you. Rick, it says we're getting a lot of traffic. They're getting a lot of traffic. You shut it off. A lot of traffic is going to go somewhere else. It's going to go down the next street down there. Center, center road. And that comes out right dead ahead of the school. I'd be concerned about that. Well, no, it's easy to go from the school. Center road is coming out. Yeah. 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 You're going to have a traffic coming down by the roundabout there. I think I'd be my concern with it. With, with traffic, we're going to put more traffic onto them. Well, there's only one way to find out. Because <laughs> we just, I mean, you just, you just don't know. I don't care. You know about it. Yeah. Well, I think. I don't know. If the state's going to let you shut it off. I'm dealing with the state. Well, that's, a, that's the only wild card. That's why I meant it. <laughs> yes. I don't think so. And then within the right of way, the berm or whatever you put up there, um, you allow it enough well, room to put it around, or, or you just put it right at the edge, you put it at the edge, and it definitely is a state issue. That's what I think. You don't want people trying to turn around. You just got to talk to the state and find out what they recommend. And again, we don't, we don't think we need to invent this. Well, the state, I'm sure, will have a very clear yeah. job. They put in this situation, so they probably have a pretty set pattern. Here's what you need to do, and here's what they agree, and here's what they don't do. Brick it. So, yeah. Brick it. Yeah. Can you hear me, Brick it? I'm here. Yeah, I can hear you now. Do, do, the, do the trucks still go down through there? Because that uh, was... Occasionally. Shut off our trucks at one time. Right, right, but there are still trucks that do go through. They because there are no signs. Yeah, the signs are all gone. That's the way. Right. But, but we didn't want to shut it off because the cars are going too fast. So that's a Monroe County issue. Uh, well, then there's the road the village. Right. So, so the major, the, 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 the major uh, concern is the speed of the traffic, Cricket? Yeah, I, I'm having a real hard time hearing you guys because there's somebody who's not muted and, and moving stuff around. What was that question? I, I said the main concern of the, of the uh, town is, or of your street, is the speed of the traffic, right? Well, the speed and the danger of, of getting on and off. There. Yeah, on the on the hundred or fifteen hundred. Right. Correct. So so how about if we go ahead? We'll talk with the state and see, you know, if they go along with it, what we need to do to be in compliance if we want to just try this as a as a trial basis. Um and then say we'll try it for three months. I'm sort of assuming we can try everything and let's say so by the 1st of July, so July, August, September. 
Don't forget that sewer job is going to go up by the post office. Okay? So a lot of traffic's going to come up, stop, not going up and down that road. That's going to be shut down for the summer. Rick, if we tried two things, one, making the street a one way street, and then two, um, talk to the sheriff department about putting up a, a, a monitor or something there to regulate the speed, some, some sort of, a, um, what's that device they use to make sure the, it indicates your speed as you're coming into the trailer. Yes, whatever like the one on Depot Street that everybody tries to go faster than what it's saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're open to whatever. I mean, ideally it would be nice to, you know, block it off for a temporary time, whatever, if you put up a jersey barrier that's easy to move around or um, whatever, or if you decide to do it as a one-way. I mean, it would be nice just to try something at this point in time to see what happens. Well, and, and are they, they closing the entrance in from uh, Yeah. By the post office, they said they'd let us into the post office, right? I haven't seen any traffic plan yet, or when they're starting. I think I, think I would have a, a, a way in on that. It's what they're going to do that route. Yeah, yeah, I know. They haven't, they haven't shown us anything. We don't know. Because, uh, you know, if, if you're allowing people, the only way you get into High Park Village is coming up uh, this road or, or other roads. Right? He's making it. So you, may be, you may be choking on businesses. Oh. Our business. <laughs> that's right. So, what are we waiting to uh, see what the state says? I guess that's going to be the first step, right? right. Yeah. See what they so, so let's gather that information for the state, and then uh, we'll go pick it up again and go forward with it and see what we can do. Yep, sounds good to me. Okay. We'll, we'll see what we can do. We do, we do hear the concerns of the people on the street. Okay. Thank you. We'll find out from the state. We'll be, we'll let, we'll brick it, brick it. We'll let you and Michelle be the contact from the street. Okay. Oh, that's fine. Oh, that's fine with us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got your. <laughs> he was pointing fingers, and I was pointing back. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific. Thanks. We'll let you know what we find Thank out. Thank you. Okay. The, the, the Hyde Park Fiber Committee recommendation. Uh, this, this is another one of these things that with, with COVID happening, it's suddenly gone from going slowly to like, whoa, full speed ahead because the issue of so many families not having access to high speed internet so that they have real problems with schools being closed mm -hmm. is just really. This has popped that up and uh, do a top priority all over the place. So, and, and I know even the, even in Washington, suddenly people being very serious about getting money to states so rural areas can be, you know, can be upgraded. So, so this the Vermont Senate is supposed to vote tomorrow to pass the I think it's well the House bill is nine fifty nine or nine sixty nine, but basically the amends the current state law to allow the select board to vote to form a CUD or communication union district. And I see a couple people from the fiber committee, the high park fiber committee. So um, I'll let them speak in a second, but basically the action item is to uh, sign a resolution and then uh, join one or more other towns to start work on a CUD. And I don't know which one do you want to go first with Carol or Michael? I think that's uh, it. How about Michael speaking for us since he's our requested representative if we go forward? This is Jack Wool. Yes, Jack Wool. Okay, thanks, Jack. I agree as well. Carol Fauna. <laughs> oh, thanks, both of you. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot to step backwards, Michael. <laughs> Anyhow, um, the. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the basic situation is that the state is pushing all of us to get into a communication union district so that then we can get 
a fiber installation as quickly as possible. They're they're really funneling everybody into this same situation, and there's no uh, economic or financial cost to the city or the town, but. Uh, uh, you know, the communications district will have to raise its money however it raises its money. But there's no, you know, we're not obligating the town in any way. I know, Carol, uh, Jack, you want to say anything else? Well, this is Jack. Just in general, uh, this is a, a movement that's supported in Vermont in order to bring us better communications to our homes and businesses. And the vision for Hyde Park has always been uh, from the community and Ron's support is fiber to every door. It's become more uh, important through the COVID and because it really shows the weaknesses in our communications infrastructure for both school and for working, uh, teleworking, working at home. And uh, I, like many of my neighbors, work for a company or uh, I work for the Navy and they're very remote and the uh, ability to have good communications basically is contingent upon staying employed over. Yeah, and, and many companies uh, will be able to locate here that wouldn't be able to locate here without fiber. Uh, the way we currently get internet, if we're lucky, and I use that word in quotes, the way we currently get uh, internet is through Comcast or Charter, and they have a, a good download speed, but you can't upload anything. And the more we get into things like people viewing uh, uh, medicine remotely, a school remotely, uh, even music, things like that remotely, your your upload speed is becomes tremendously important. So uh, being balanced, which is one of the things that fiber does, is far more important than it ever was before. This, this also gives us, I'm sorry, go ahead, Carol. I was going to say, I, I agree with both of them and both of you, and you can even add it uh, to uh, cloud services, just when people are using iCloud or, or you know Google services, Dropbox, you have to put things, your pictures, your files, into the cloud, and that's that upload speed that is that is lacking both in DSL and uh, cable supply, supplied uh, internet at this point. Uh, and copper just does doesn't work. Um, I have reasonable internet speed here, but uh, we frequently have have outages, and uh, and and it's a problem. Uh, copper is just antiquated at this point. Yeah, and, and in case you don't know, both Comcast and Charter depend on copper. That's their their uh, delivery mechanism. That's in the wires and cables that they deliver the stuff to us. Yeah, and so, I'm, I'm one of the uh, consolidated communications former Fairpoint customers. So we're, as my friends tell me, you're at the very end of the Internet. So taking documents to work, I've got to go park outside the library to do any kind of upload of a document for work. So it's it's a challenge. So I guess what we need is... Yeah, we uh, polled the current fiber committee members and the, on the resolution there's a blank for representative for Hyde Park and for Johnson and Cambridge, possibly Belvedere. Uh, I think Wolcott is joining the Northeast Kingdom fiber net that's already set up. I haven't heard anything from Morristown yet. So, and Eden's thinking about it. So two of those towns or more have to sign resolutions using uh, actually a Hyde Park recommendation, which was Lamoille Fibernet for the name of this new district, which would serve whatever towns in Lamoille County that join. So in the resolution is Lamoille Fibernet. The blank for the town rep uh, by committee uh, recommendation is Michael Rooney. Um, I'm guessing Jack and Carol would be alternates potentially, or, or at least Jack would be an alternate. And I haven't heard from the other two members. So. Carol, are you off the alternate list too for now? 
Um, I, I suppose I, I to uh, be a a second alternate. So after after Jack. Okay. So those Who twist your arm, Carol? <laughs> <laughs> Ow! <laughs> and then the other. Yeah, and we we. Yeah, you know, the other comment is we've had a lot of support from the Moyle Planning Group, uh, uh, both in our meetings and courting meetings with other district and information meetings with the states. And we've tried to take the view that we want to do something together uh, with our Lamoille neighbors outside of Hyde Park. And so the Planning Commission had uh, has, was very helpful in the coordination there. Over. Thank you for saying that, Jack. Uh, Leah uh, Kilbadiova was uh, at many of our meetings from regional planning. The motion would include, because it's not signed by the governor yet, I think a way to get around that is to have the motion to approve the resolution uh, having Hyde Park join the, C, the Lamoille fiber net is, effect, is approved today and effective when the governor signs the um, law, a lot into place. So whatever he gets around to it kind of thing, it, it, we won't have to revisit this. Right. So that's the that's what's on the table. Yeah. Yeah. To, to join the right. Memorial Fiber Net. Uh, and and there just for research, right? Well, I can find out what, and to be part of the group that Hopefully, it's going to turn into something that will really be beneficial. To get it going. Yeah. 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 See, I'm still under the impression I don't know if computers are going to catch on. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, that's what happens when you live at the end of the line, right? Exactly. Uh, my grandson is way in the future. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, Dave, this if two or more towns do this resolution, they will form their own board yeah. serving the region. Yeah. The Hyde Park Fiber Committee is going to have to decide how long they stay active, sort of watch out for Hyde Park's interests while this new board gets organized. So there may be a, a double layer for a little while while our interested people are still watching what the new regional does. No, no, no property taxes at all. Okay, all right. Dave's made a motion. Roll is second. What do you think, Roger? You ready for technology? Yeah. <laughs> you better put your dumpers first. Okay, yeah, that's true. Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? No. Anybody abstaining? Okay. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you, technology people. <laughs> thank you all very much for your service. Thank you for your help. Appreciate that. Thank right. you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, Leon Valley Hall committee report. I believe Mary Waltz was online. Are are you the speaker for this topic, Mary? Oh, I think that that you would be looking for me. Is, yes. Can you hear me? Hi, Mary. <laughs> Hi. I was on mute. <laughs> so we're looking uh, for an so, just an introduction of the whole project, I guess, that you've been working on. Okay. So after the uh, town meeting uh, and the voters appropriated some funds for the hall, um, and shortly after that or just before that, I got involved in the committee. Um, we started looking at grant uh, possibilities to leverage up the money that the town had appropriated. And the first thing that we came across that was appropriate was the cultural facilities grant. And, um, and so we've been spending a lot of time looking at that, looking at the things that are eligible, and we've come up with a project that we're calling the first floor project. And the idea is that in the context of the MPG 20 that's underway and kicking off Wednesday this week, uh, that we use the appropriated money and a grant if we were awarded it to get the first floor open and running and available to use um, 
for something like seven, eight, nine months of the year, sort of in the summer, but also in the shoulder season. And um, we've been trying to put together, get estimates from various people about what that would look like, but basically there are two components. One is get the electrical fire safety improvement stuff sorted out once and for all and make sure that everything is um, there for us to use the first floor and have the other floors safe and buttoned down uh, without power sent to them, but getting rid of the knob and tubing, fixing up the incomplete work that was kind of left hanging after the 2000 work. And then the second component would be to try and get some heat into the building that would allow us to use the space in the shoulder months. Um, and that's what we're aiming for. The deadline for the application is the 27th of July. And, you know, there are a lot of balls still in the air trying to get the work spec'd out and get decent estimates because you need quite a few estimates uh, to understand what we're budgeting for and also to support the application. So, um, I think that's it. Uh, yes, and of course we need a letter of support from the select board, both as the owner of the building and we would hope um, as an expression of support of all the work that's going on with MPG 20 because that is really the background context for uh, the grant application. Right, so once Basically, once you've got the grant together and you've got your costs and everything, then you can let us see that and then we can, um, based with information, do a letter of support for you. Yeah, I think ideally I would have had all that stuff together for you now, but um, partly COVID and partly just, um, yeah, trying to really put together an excellent application that is very well specced out, very compelling story. So it's just not ready for you now, but I thought it was important to get the select board aware of what was going on because um, the deadline is the 27th of July and you don't meet again until late in June and, you know, I wanted to get this before you. Ron's been also very much involved in, you know, getting regularly updated on where we are. So I, I, I guess I would leave it to Ron to figure out how to get the letter to you at the appropriate time, but also to get you the detailed uh, project once it's fully spec'd out. Yeah, we'll do that uh, probably the week, the regular monthly meeting is July 20th, so the about the week prior we should have this pretty well finished up so the board can look at it over that weekend prior and and have a letter of support ready to include. If there's any special meetings and you're ready, maybe that would be something. But I think we, right now we want to shoot for the for about the 15th of July to have everything buttoned up on your end and ready to go to the board. And um, yeah, that'll give you a week after you know the 20th to get the all the bundling together for the grant application. Yeah, and I think the other thing I, I wanted to just flag is you know um, part of uh, in addition to the letter of support if if there's somebody on the select board who'd be willing to be named as somebody particularly interested in following through and being a representative on the project as we execute, that would be good to know. I know Roger expressed some interest uh, in the past, or maybe Susan, I don't know, but you could give that some thought because we'd certainly put that in the application. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, Roger, is that something that you're interested in? I, I think you're, it's, if it's not this fall, it could be over the winter type of thing. I don't know what the grant turnaround is, but I it might get an award in September, and then you have to do the contractor thing. So a lot yeah, of the work. I'll, I'll, I'll work on it. I mean, once I get um, once I get through this thing, I got to get done and um, have some time on it. I'm going to be kind of laid up for 16 weeks, so. One, one six? Yeah. Sixteen? Well, we'll figure that well, out. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't need to be decided now. And no. I hope that all goes well for you, Roger. So. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you, Mary. I think so. Anybody got any questions for Mary? If we're getting something to speak? Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Glad, glad to see you applying for money. 
Okay. Uh, great. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for all you're that you're doing. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye. Okay, here we have the, the donation of a quarter acre. And you, 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 I refuse to print, to print out all 40 pages, but I do the, I do the ones that sort of have all the notes on it. Did you guys get and see where the, this is? Yeah, on that winter dam. Yeah, yeah. There's <clears throat> so the only real value to that uh, uh, parcel uh, would be the uh, uh, dry hydrant that, that's there. The dry hydrant? Yeah, the dry hydrant there. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I went and visited the spot myself and looked at it. And I got to uh, speak with uh, one of the neighbors there, um, Mark Walter. Joe Josh, uh, Joshua Goodell. He owns property adjacent to it. Yeah. Oh, right there, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. And uh, he, uh, uh, we talked about the parcel, and he seemed to know with the clouds that want to donate the, the, the parcel, the town. Um, I didn't see any real value in it as far as the town obtaining it. Um, it might be something that the, the clouds might be able to work a deal with uh, the Goodells to. Uh, to obtain it, and then it's tax revenue coming in. Um, oh, the, 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 Eight dollars a year. Or it might be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it, it. It seems to me it's mostly from them. This is something that it's a little oddity that they can clear up. I don't. I don't see any downside. I asked around the first time. I said, "Okay, so we're getting into a situation where we have a dam, and then you have to maintain the dam, and then you have to." It's like, no, no, no. The dam's not even operate. No. The culvert had some work done to it at some point. Yeah, so I, I don't believe there's any additional right away at that culvert. It's the 25 feet from center. Yeah. And typically, if you're going to work on an inlet, you're going to need more than the 25 to get in there and get the side. So <laughs> if the town were to take it, we could sell it after putting on some easements for the dry hydrant maintenance and for the culvert maintenance. And then we don't have to get them should that ever become a need. And then the person could actually buy if they want to get that quarter acre. Sometimes the only benefit to the quarter acre is changing your lot size so you can subdivide potentially. Okay. So that by itself is just worth the, 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 the value of it. Is, right. No, it's really about the land and it's really about maintenance easements only for right. the town. Yeah. We don't have any we can't use wetlands, we can't you know, we, other than have an easement for the water. And then the neighbor could have a benefit if they bought it from the town if after the donation and then they could change their lot acreage. That's usually yeah. why people buy yeah. small pieces. Now. That's the only benefit I can see because it would count under our zoning for uh, subdivision. Even if it's all well in, it still counts for subdivision purposes. If he was oh, close. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's really we're talking about very minor benefits to that piece of land, but that's the yeah. only other one I could think of is somebody going from you know three and three quarter acre lot to a four in a two acre zone. Yeah. That's that's a big benefit at that point. For that person, I don't think so. I think it's all regulated with Class Two wetland. Part of that map, it looked like it was pretty much used up for the for the yeah. state of Vermont, pretty much at this point. So, the benefit to them in tax right up getting rid of getting rid of it is donation gets them a tax benefit. On their, well, where's, on where's the rest of their it's not going to, this is, that's it. we're not talking money here. This is it. That's right. This is it. This, this is, is it. That's their, they have this one thing hanging on the estate list to get rid of. And, you know, the quickest way is to donate it to the town. Oh, so I, I, I think what uh, Mr. Goodell told me was, that, and it may, what I remember what he was saying was that uh, the Goodells owned the property, sold some to the clouds, or the clouds owned the property and sold some to the Goodells, one or the other. And this was a portion that was just left over from the from so, the transaction. So, you know, that beaver pond is just up there. That yeah. beaver dam. It's back up there. Yes, yeah, back up in there. Not on this property. No. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't that see, was exactly my point. I didn't see any beaver dam when I fell over there. Yeah, it's just the concrete. I went up, yeah. Looks like a substantial concrete old dam that's still there. I went up the other day and looked and said, oh, okay, this is further back up. 
I was concerned we were getting into well, there's no more. Uh, yeah. I think I think we need to entertain a motion for the town to accept the generous gift. No more. <laughs> it will tell everybody off. Okay. Um, all in favor, Roger. You okay with it? Yes, I am. Okay. Um, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. The town moves a little bit more broadly. <laughs> State Yes, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Um, the uh, okay, we need to do this year's uh, town audit engagement letter with uh, with Glenda Pound, and we had talked about it last year and figured we were in the middle, and this is the well, if you like, it's the third year of what we usually do is a three-year contract. So we'll we'll uh, do this year. Um, and then next year will be appropriate to, to go out to bid. Just because just need to, we need to do those things periodically. We, we all get into habits of using the same people and don't think about it. And it's always it's always good to go out to bid and see what else is out in the world and how things have changed. Keeps us all on our toes. Um, so that means a motion because you should sign it. It's actually upstairs in Kim's. Okay. My office or Kim's office? It's waiting for us. Waiting for your signature. <laughs> if the board approves it. I've come into the little thing and these things. I know. I'm going to be glad to get back to some semblance of normal. Um, so I guess we need a letter to approve and sign the audit engagement letter. Second. Okay. You good with it, Roger? Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Okay. Um, Susan to sign it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Good. Why are you here? Don't worry, we'll slow down. <laughs> um, the letters of hire. So every every transitional time from winter seasonal folks to summer seasonal folks we we haven't advertised but we've called the old folks that have tried the you know prior experience to see if they're interested again so for, about that old folks thing. i know they're old, <laughs> old folks home. so they've they've all been agreeable yep they've all been agreeable to come back again as dale nolan and blaine delisle uh one of the clarifications is we've Hired summer help at $16 an hour in the past. This past winter, we moved winter plowing CDL operator to 17. That was a vote you took. This is a summer CDL person, Blaine, who helps with the trucking and all the sand moving or whatever. Whether you wanted to match, which is the question, the 17 for the CDL operator and 16 for the non-CDL. And that would be the two different rates that we use. Right. So that's all. That's the only question that was on the table tonight. As far as whether you want to do that, I would think it makes. Let's see. It would, the uniform. Well, I, I, yeah, I have trouble seeing why it's worth a dollar more one season than another. So just the CDL license. Sense. Yes, the CDL, right? So I, so I think it makes sense to have them be the same. For, yeah, for the for the CDL purposes. So that the. Motion. This is a recommendation from Mark with that one question. So the Dale Nolan, who runs the tractor and small equipment, would be at 16, and Blaine would be 17. They get a letter of hire with a job description and the personnel guidelines because they were terminated last fall, and they get hired again. The only thing we haven't done, which I thought of this year, was just to whether those should be advertised or not. That's just a question. If anybody thinks we should be tapping other people out there just because they're new jobs and we don't guarantee them to come back next summer from a practical perspective because we don't we don't have a year round we don't have a year round part time people. We have the two different seasons. Right. So I don't maybe next season that you just open it up to the general public to see if there's anybody else out there that wants some part time. I think I'm gonna abstain from uh, decision on this one because of the uh, lady being my cousin. Yeah. So so you don't have to decide that tonight. I just want to put that out there. So we haven't oh, okay, we haven't okay. looked at broadly before. We just keep right, right. Okay, right. just want to get it off. Take a moment. 
<laughs> no, I have no problem with it. No, I, no. I so no I guess right, we'll do that. We'll do the make the CDL the same way yeah. both seasons, <laughs> and um, and go ahead and sign the uh, the letters of hire for the for the two folks. Yeah. And and then I think you know maybe in the fall what we're talking about is just like with one day after three years, uh, it's been more and more <laughs> we've audited and periodically just want to open the door to see if anything's there. Yeah. You know and it, doesn't doesn't do any harm. No, it's no, no other reason than just opening yeah. it up. There's no performance yeah. issues or anything like that. No, right, really... right, exactly. So we get a motion to approve both of those at those two rates. Okay. I'll make a motion for approval for Dale and Blaine. Right. Second. You okay? You okay with it, Roger? He just seconded it. Oh, he seconded it. it must be he's all right. Okay. Um, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nope. And Brian's abstaining. Okay. Okay, the speaking of technology, <laughs> the uh, iPad loaner. Now, particularly, we're going to tie Roger up and then keep him in his house. 16 right? weeks, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Roger, how, how long after your surgery do you have to stay in? It all, it all depends how it goes. Well, we'll assume it goes. It's in 12 to 16 weeks. Wow. Either October, September, October. Yeah. And, this, and this. That's, that depends if they got to spread up. See, if there's some saving, you can go. They can do it. Okay. If not, they have to split it back. Yeah, right. When you're, okay. That's when you're that long. Okay. Okay. We'll, we'll hold for microscopic. Woo. Um. Dogs. <clears throat> They're cutting. They're cutting him. Okay. 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 So the the iPad is a new program that we're trying to figure out, which is and I and I think for certainly for Roger Audet, who will not be here for an extended time, it would help to have a, a decent device to look at stuff. We did after Dave had some questions about the cost of the of the the mark the the iPad, which is a certain type of device. Uh, which we were estimating around four hundred dollars. We started looking at some of the other ones, which are I think uh, uh, Fire. There's a Fire that um, it's a small tablet, basically, and those are in the hundred and fifty to two hundred range. Yeah. But then you look at the details of the add-ons that you have to have. They, they're more of a subscription base. So if you want to get the uh, reader for the PDFs that I always send out, that's a then you add on to that. So there's a, there's a Sort of like it's it's it ends up being about the same, except that the iPad has a really good reputation for being a pretty hardcore tablet with low virus risk, and that was a, that was one of the reasons our IT guy Eugene said that would be best for people that really just want to look at a couple things and maybe click on the things they're not supposed to. Sometimes it sort of protects the town from that because they'll have a town email system. So as you're the two things that Roger Audet will have if if we could get this going, it would be email, and this is another discussion, but email as well as the browser so that we could send them to a website and look at stuff. And I think that's really is limited. We're not going to do the Office 365 with the spreadsheets and all that business. Um, it's really just going to be for viewing, clicking, reading, and then the email itself does serve as a backup system. So if you're careful about how you get emails, you could create folders in your email system for highway issues or police issues and so on so that when you're if you really want a simple way to get back to something you thought you read you yeah. click that folder and then go down and, and then within that folder you can search for keywords so the supplemental piece that we're adding to this program is that Allison has agreed to uh, be the IT person so that we don't have to call Eugene so Allison and Eugene would work together with this kind of program to, to start. She'll, teach us. she'll she'll go to your house and walk you through the process, how to connect to the Wi-Fi. She knows some of that now, but Eugene's going to train her how to take a, a new device, go to somebody's house. And this is an Apple. Yeah. My wife's an Apple. 
Yeah, right. So somebody's got to figure out how to do that quite right, so assuming that you don't know anything. Yeah. But the benefit of having Allison do it is that well, we she would it. she would be on your staff kind of yeah. thing to focus yeah. on that as a as a new job duty. Yeah. But be great. To, this would be just strictly Hyde Park business. Oh yeah, it's high, it's it's limited to the Hyde Park email address. So, so and browsing. It's open for people to look at. That, right? Public. It'll be public documents. Yeah. 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 So if you want, if you did by chance put personal email on a new, then that personal email email gets subject to public records requests. Yeah. Same with our old business. Yep. So as long as it's on there, it's really the company's email, and which is the public's email. The browsing and things like that, that's a little harder. The, the unit will be covered by our um, tech group service people that watch. So like. This, no matter where this laptop is, Tech Group is watching it because it's a town laptop, so they can have access to it. Allison's new laptop is watched by Tech Group, so we're trying to do the best we can to keep any conduits into the town system protected. So right. the iPad will be under that as well, even if it's you know. So rule of thumb, town business. Right. Well, and and that's why I think you know more boards, other boards, not you know. Um, government boards are going to this kind of a system when a, when somebody comes on a on a committee, you get the iPad that goes with it, yes. and that's and that's where you get all your board business, yeah. you know. And it's just back and forth. And again, and again, it doesn't have to be you don't have to get into the spreadsheets. You can keep it, keep it really simple. But that because I I do all my stuff on my iPhone. Well, if somebody wanted something, I don't. I got so conditioned being in the in the being a public servant for so long that I don't, people want to read all my email, God bless them, have a good time. <laughs> so but, but generally speaking, it, it makes more and more sense to go to a system where, and we could just do this, you know, for a couple of, you know, if you're talking about five iPads. So I, I could get up and ask, find out the questions I asked about the employees. They're, they're yeah, they'd be things. filed somewhere on your You'd have everything that I send you. So that's one of the, like I said, if you wanted to create a folder, because I sent you the, the 2019 gross wages, yeah. if you were really going to key on salary and wages, you create a folder called yeah. salary and wages, and you'd have everything there so you don't have to go through 500 but, emails. But, but I, would I rely on what you sent me, or would it be on there for me to look up? On where? Well, if we send spoiler. it to you, you have to. to yeah. You would have to send it to me to get it. I, I couldn't go in there and key it myself. Um, the, right now, we set up um, Kristen and Allison with a VPN, which allows them to go into the, the house brain. Yes. <laughs> They're the only ones. But I, don't even, I can't even do that. So if I need a report from Allison, I have to call her with, yeah. and she sends it. So they're yeah, sort of the gatekeepers. <laughs> They're the gatekeepers on the real access, and Kim was going to try to set that up for her too. So we'd have call resiliency or redundancy, but you have people off site that can come and get stuff. Yeah. We also have everything stored off site. So even if this place disappeared, we'd have off site people that could run on the off site server, and nobody would know the difference in the town. So that's one of the benefits, kind of doing these things this way, because it's possible and it's really not. It's really much better for bus service to the people. So you're only really preparing for the future, but you're also providing things that are secure and safe and you know, ready for people. Now this will eliminate printing out the uh, packets. I, I think it does if your screen is big enough. So one of the choices are the 11, 12, 13, 14 inch screens. They're all variables. A lot of the ones that get below 10 inches aren't much better than the phone because yeah. they're small. Yeah. But I think we're looking at 13, 14 in that range. Yeah. Yeah, um, so, you can, so you can almost yeah, hold up a piece of paper that looks like this and you read it. Right. It's just like you had a piece of paper. Yeah. If it's too small, there's really not a big benefit to it. it it's, it's not yeah. comfortable. I don't know if Susan agrees with that, but sometimes no, no, I, no, I <laughs> on, the, on the small screens, if you want to look at something and you're, you're constantly trying to expand it to read it or yeah, something. Yes, right. Ron, Ron and I will be talking and husband waiting. I have to go in the house and look at the desktop. I don't know. Just like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same way. So it's it's really about ease of use too. So after this is set up, the only requirement of a board member is the Wi-Fi. You have to call a telephone company or Comcast or the new fiber system, get the Wi-Fi in your building wherever you're going to be closest to it, 
and then we'll send somebody to get it connected and running and get the email. Right. You don't tell them don't pay for your Wi-Fi. No, that's all on the board members' dime because those vary so much. You can you can pay from thirty to a hundred dollars a month. Yeah, the two most already yeah. Depends if they're going to pay for it or not. <laughs> <laughs> so if it's in your house, you're not going to The initial idea was that that was the one requirement. Is you worry about that because that's it's, that's beyond what we can really control. There's a lot of choices there. So we're going to, without, without needing to do anything more, we will just proceed with that, work with Roger Audet and Allison and Eugene to make it sort of happen. And then in a month or whatever, we'll get a read back from Roger to see how it's right, going. Right, that works. Roger's going to be a guinea pig. Hey, you've got time to play with it. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. You may not want to pay with it in the first week or two, but maybe <laughs> after that you may be itching to do it. So. Okay, so that's all I needed for that. Okay. I'll give you an update on that. Okay, the Village Water Project. Yeah. They are going ahead with it, right? <laughs> yeah, I talked to Mark French today. We're trying to get Mark French sort of tuned into the contractor, which is uh, Nick Minash. And Mark said that he doesn't have any new information from Nick. He had an initial start date of June 1st, and Mark suggested that it was partly due to easements. I don't think it's our easements, but it might be other people's easements. Um, is one reason for the delay in getting them started. So setting that aside, as they got further along towards that contract, they identified this uh, easement that they needed on the library property, 141 Main Street. Uh, it's a little bit of a stub. So you have your main that comes in from Main Street, goes just north of the sidewalk by a couple feet, and then it splits into two service lines. Where it's shared is village. Where it splits, it becomes private service line. So they need the easement for that little, for that portion that's north of the sidewalk. So that's one request. A couple of days ago, fire department parcel was identified as a second need. So that is ongoing now. That uh, the town attorney needs to uh, look at easement needs for the fire station property. So that because of a little deed research, trying to find the right deed, get a good sketch of what they need so we can know exactly where the right of way is going to be off of Centerville Road. So that's almost done. We just had a conversation with Ed Webster today about a choice that he had, which was put the water meter box in the road right in the front of the building or put the water meter box in the back on the lawn away from the traffic, and that's the one he prefers is to have it come around the back. So the easement is for the village to take the water from Centerville and get pretty close to the back, I guess this would be the southeast corner of the building, and they would control that whole line plus the box. We take the little stuff to get in the building is our small service line. So that's one rec Ed recommended, and um, eventually that will be ready for review. So the only one that's ready for Signing, if you will, is the library easement. Um, Did we figure out the cemetery? Uh, the cemetery is haven't heard about that one lately. I think they they might have adjusted the plan. I know they're trying to figure out how not to need that for water, right. but I haven't heard any updated. Need... I haven't seen a new easement draft for that one yet. We got an original request from the village lawyer. Side. So it was probably the Memorial Day weekend, right? Because it was happening right over and there was a holiday. Yeah. So the holiday and it was like, we kind of needed to sign this release right away. instantly, or the whole project was vanishing. And um, I said, gee, that would be too bad. And, <laughs> and shipped it all off to our lawyer because Ron and looking, looking at it, it was like, what they originally sent is the town would be signing away everything in the universe that the village might ever possibly think they needed in the next 400 years. Um, plus, part of it was about cemetery stuff that we have no control over anyway. And um, so, working with the lawyer came back and actually it's just this now. It's this very specific. Here's what you need. Here's all you get. The end. And it's about the water. And it's not about. Everything else that it could potentially be in the next two hundred years. 
So <clears throat> that's what, okay. <laughs> We'd be happy to have the town sign there. So, so I think. I think that the, this easement is, uh, is easier because it's only for our water. The one on Main Street was shared with the Polo building. So that one had to be done a certain way to get the access. And anyway, and we had to understand what they wanted. So this one's kind of ironed out a little bit. We have, we'll use almost the same template, if you will, for the library. And once the town attorney reviews and approves the documents, make sure the attachment is good, which is your exhibit A, which describes the project on a plan. So you don't have to really describe the plan. You say, look at exhibit A. This is where you're giving up your rights in, in lieu of the water line. Uh, once those are approved, then they'll be in the same condition as the library easement, which is ready to sign. So you could do it in one motion, uh, contingent on town attorney approval of the documents and have Susan able to sign those. So the question for the board is, do you want to grant an easement on the fire station property? Because it's your property. That's that's the question. I just went over the process of how to do it. But that's the question that the board can say yes or no to. If you say no, the fire station still needs water. Their village wants to put a meter on there so they can gauge use at the fire station. And I think that's because it's directly, it's, it's in the line of being related to the reservoir level. So, for example, if the fire is a major fire going on and they have multiple trucks at the fire station, they're drawing the water down from the reservoir, they'll be able to monitor that drawdown compared to what the reservoir is reading. So they know that that was the reason for the drawdown in the reservoir. They never did put a meter in that fire station for the water? I know they talked about it. I, I think they, I, at the time they were talking about it, they were getting ready for the design of this Project. So now we're at construction. We five years ago, we talked about it. Said that's when we said no more about water for swimming pools. For swimming pools, right? On the meters. Yep. Yeah. Right. So, so that, I think that's what happens. They incorporate the need for a meter and try to figure out where to put it. So I don't think it, I don't think it's directly related to charging the water. So I asked Ed about that, and he said, "Well, I remember Don Waterhouse said that they'll never charge for the water." And I'm like, "I don't know. You get a water meter. It's kind of hard not to charge for the water, but..." That's a that we haven't gone to yet. That that issue I I, I didn't have time to deal with today. So, so our options we say no, we don't get a water meter, so they don't try to get the water. We say yes, if for a water meter, we have to pay for water. Uh, could they not? I think there's our yeah. Don't? I think this is the this is the bigger pipe for their almost their hydrant on the building. Because so I think they're all set up with the kitchen water, the two separate. Volume. Yeah, this is a different, this is a four inch line, I think, just for their drawdown on the tank when they fill up the tankers. So that's a point of clarification that, again, this is how all happened today. So yeah, just, no, they, they fill a lot of tankers here. No, not as a rule. They haven't. Maybe there's a fire, they're generally dry runs in, in water someplace. Close as that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we have. I mean, after the fire, you know, need no more. You come back and you fill it. You know, to have a tank in there or whatever they top it off. Yeah. And then they, I think they, yeah, we used to fill a tank out there every once in a while. We have we have time if Roland wants to get into that kind of detail of the building of the water. Will that occur? We don't have anything in writing from the village on that. We need something. Yeah. And then what what happens if nothing's approved? Right. Do they just have to go to a fire, dry hydrant or a fire hydrant somewhere that's pressurized and just don't fill the station and take that whole project off the project? So there might be a reason, but you know, we want the big filling water here at the fire station that's that resulted in this proposal. Right. If the town says, is there any alternatives? Can we get rid of it? That hasn't that discussion hasn't happened yet. And the volume, the size of the pump station is what, like twelve by fourteen or something? Yeah, it's large. Yeah, it's, it's large. It's rather large. And it'll be like I said, off the right hand side you face the building. It's where that for that project here. It was ridiculous to have it right off front of the the building from what I read, right, providing me with and stuff like that. So I guess we got to decide if, uh, if it's going to be advantageous for us to have a, a meter or even the, the line to feed it if we don't, whether we need it or not. And that would be rolling even on the fire department. Is it going to be a benefit? To well, I think that's in, we got there coming in later so we can. Yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll already, take a lesson back. It's already a line in there, don't yeah. they? Yeah. Yeah, so let's, well, let's well, get more. It's unmetered, I think, is what the problem is. Yeah. It's unmetered now. Well, they were supposed to be. 
we were that years ago. But well, take, you know, working with this data or mountain design and engineers. It takes a while, I guess. <laughs> so <laughs> so, so let's, let's give a little more information about the fire station. Tonight. I think we're fine with the library. Yes, we are. Yeah, yeah. library is okay. Yeah, it's an fire station. That's not a big deal. Yeah. Let's um, I get a motion to approve signing the, what is it, the water waiver. The, <laughs> 141 Main Street. Easy. Yeah. Yeah. Water come out of their budget. That's not a big deal. Not into the budget. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, maybe we don't have to have anything in there. Right. <laughs> That's what we need to find out. Right. Um, so we move to library 141. Library 141. And the other one's not read. The other document's not ready anyway. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we got a motion. I need a motion. Yeah. Oh, second. Okay. You good, Roger? Yep. Okay. Um, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay. Anybody opposed? Okay. All right. Look at that. That's keep listening, as you can tell. We're getting to <laughs> town facilities and sort of an update on how we're how we're doing things. That's a pretty important. Hi, Kim. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I came downstairs because the apple was so down on the beginning. Ah. I was like, I'm just, I'm just going to go down. <laughs> yeah. That, uh, it's funny how some places they have to some don't. I don't know. So in terms of you know, what, and, and it really is what the new normal is going to look at, because a lot of our constraint is literally the size of the, of the office. Yeah. Um, we had, I was in here one day talking to Kristen. I came in to sign some stuff to Al, who was at home. And it was Kristen and Julie and I, and we were very separate. And before this conversation, I had thought if we limit the clerk's office to three, that would include Julie, because her desk is right there right in there. our office. Yeah. Then if Ron were to come in, he's in his space. If Allie were to come in, she's in her space. The only problem with that is that there's not like good airflow in their offices, but there's their own space that they had to come in for a day or a half a day or whatever. Right. And as we were talking, I was like looking at the research and I just thought there's no way that three people plus an attorney researcher can be in here. So I had to kind of step, take a step back and think about how that would work. So it's basically we're limiting it to two people in the clerk's office. And so a clerk staff and Julie, or a clerk staff and a researcher, and Ron, if Ron needed to come in for something, or Allie, if they need to come in for something. Um, Allie asked me to book off, block off a couple of hours for her for uh, processing the payroll, I think, on Tuesday morning. So she'll come in on Tuesday mornings and for the, that block, I'm not scheduling appointments. Um, at some point in time, Matt's going to have to get training from Julie, the new listener. So there's two people right there, plus one person, and they're potentially working right. closer than right. at speed. And so if that were, when that happens, because he's going to have to have training, when that happens, We've just decided that for those four hours, whoever's in the office that day, me or Kristen, is just going to go home and work from home for those four hours so that they can have the time that they need for, for training. Um, if it comes to that, I mean, Julie's still a list or assistant. She doesn't have the authority of the listers to do what needs to be done. So, you know. Um, so we've got, uh, Kristen and I created a schedule, um, was kind of waiting to hear what the governor was going to say today as far as how we were going to put that um, in an email out to all the, the attorneys and title searchers and people who use the law. Um, so I'm going to go home tonight and update my email to reflect that um, and just kind of go from there. 
it, it seems as though with, with the amount of data that we've been able to put online, that as people, people were forced to do things online, I think what a lot of them are finding that they can get a lot more work done staying in their office or home or wherever they are doing it online, that the need to come into the various, not just here, but go into various town clerks' offices is something that is, um, for, a, for a lot of the work that they do, is being eliminated. If they want to go further back in records, you know, different towns have only gone, you know, certain, then they, it, it requires them to come in. But so, calling and making an appointment is not, you know, that's just, that's right. just becoming the normal. That's what you have to do. I'm not the only one doing this. Right. Or all over the state right. doing this. But if if they don't want to come in, for example, um, for whatever reason, if somebody doesn't want to come in, uh, if they give me a name, you know, Tom Smith, I'll go into the index cards and I'll pull every single index card with that name on it, and I'll photocopy them in chronological date order like they are in the drawer, and I'll scan that to whoever, wherever, and they can decide of these documents that are in our land records, which ones do I want to see? And they can say, can you send me book 57 page this, and I need 62 page this, and I need this, you know, and we've done that. And that helps them. It helps alleviate the bodies in the office. Yeah. It's a lot of extra work, especially if you get to families that, you know, large farms in town, um, a lot of transferring, a lot of stuff happening. But I would rather do that so that the attorneys can get what they need and our taxpayers can get ultimately their whatever trans, you know, transpired. Um, I'm going to start doing appointments for, I have not done a notary. I'm going to start doing appointments for notaries, and as long as the weather's good, I'm going to have people meet me at the picnic table. Sure. Um, if it's a marriage license, I'm going to do the same thing that every other clerk is doing. Our marriage license application is online. We're going to walk them through getting to the website, and if they don't have the technology, I can put it in an envelope on the bulletin board, I can mail it to their house, you know, whatever. Um, get that back from them. If the technology ability is there, we would email the application back to them for them to review to make sure there's some spelling errors. Because, no. you know, nobody's perfect. Yeah, right. 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 Um, and they're married to the wrong person. Okay, <laughs> that would be bad. <laughs> so, um, once all that is done, we can make an appointment to have one of the two people of the couple come in. Because it doesn't, the state yeah. law doesn't require them both yeah, to sign in front of Huh? Find a six foot chair and have a seat. <laughs> Ten. That's, that's our magic. Okay, you're going to have to, we're going to get too many people in here. We can do 10. That counts all of us. 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We've got three of you who need to go. <laughs> you, can, you can choose. And, but do you have your phone? Because you can well, wait just a minute. I'm all done. Yeah, Things are almost done. So one of you can stay. And we can put you on the phone. But we've just we got, our, we got our 10 person limit down here. Is your meeting currently happening? Because I tried to call the phone, and the phone said the meeting was not in progress. No, it's open rate. Well, we had a time when we were in executive session. Now it's back open. But then it goes off until they open it up. Yeah. No, I'm guessing that's how many people in. I don't it's know. open. We have people. Yeah. We have people online now. So is the, uh, has the governor released any uh, indication from the office that can't open it? Well, you can't read it. We are, but it's all limited by space. That's what our problem is. And that's never going to change until there's a vaccine. See, that doesn't change until there's a vaccine. It's the, it's the number of people. It's like down here. It's the number of people we can put in the space. And the other thing is, in, in deciding to open or not open, or even accept appointments, I told Ron, he said the CDC has very specific requirements on cleaning bathrooms if the bathroom is public. I am not going to clean the bathroom after every guest. I'm sorry. I'm not going to do it. And our cleaning 
uh, person comes once a week, and due to limited traffic, she's been coming every other week. Because we are doing so good of a job cleaning up after ourselves because we're wiping down everything we touch. The only thing we're not doing is that. So I had to make the bathroom not public. Mm -hmm. And I'm, when people call and make appointments, I tell them the bathroom is not a public bathroom. You'll need to make arrangements before you come. And because, of course, I'm for using the bathrooms and the in terms of the amount of footage you have, you can't count kind of kitchens in those sorts of areas. And of course, we've got the village. They have their yeah. two folks over there. What, so, so Carol has set a limit of three people on her side. Yeah. And she has very specifically told Karen that their village crew is not allowed in the office at all. So if they need something for to give to Karen, they'll meet on the back porch, or they put it in the night drop. That keeps those, you know, those extra bodies yeah. you know, down and, and out. Yeah. Okay. So on, on any given day, it's two because mostly Carol's at home, me or Kristen, yeah. and potentially a researcher. So there's four people, and if there's not a researcher in it, the Wednesday it might be dually. So right, and that le and then and that leaves space for Ron or Allie to be in the office. They need to come in for whatever right. reason. Right. Mm -hmm. And and we've I talked with Ron, it's interesting when <laughs> except for the time management and the clock. And I think one of the things that the world is finding is that um, people have the ability to work at home quite well. And and that some of um be, you know just coming in and dropping in to do things, you get into lots of conversations and when you're just when you're just at home doing the work, it just gets done. There aren't all the side conversations, there aren't all the everything. So I mean in terms of in terms of efficiency, it's certainly working okay. It's mm -hmm. it's gonna be a, again, new normal is gonna be different and until there is an effective vaccine, we will in lots of towns and lots of places are going to be literally limited by the by the square footage that you have and needing to keep keep uh, distance and it's Kim has said also, as part of you're in the office by yourself, you don't need to wear a mask, but once there's more than one person in the office, you wear a mask in the office. And again, because it's just, it's a, it's a, it's a small space. We have the run that is just happening, but we're having a contractor come in, because you know, we've had the issue of air circulation and too hot and cold, and too cold air. Or and, air. And, this, and this now virus added on top of it, we're getting we put that down at the bottom, but coming in and looking at this and seeing about getting the air system done so it's really, it suddenly becomes much more important to take care of that information. Because again, I think even ultimately with the vaccine, I think this is something that's going to be nasty for a long time. And you know, another so. one of my concerns that I've been thinking about, um, the primary is coming on August 11th. Is election day. Yeah. Um, you know, I've got to figure out the square footage of this building and just based on whatever the rules are at that time, you know, what's the maximum number of people that can be in here? Because all workers alone, right. there's going to be six people. So if the maximum is hypothetically 10, I well, then I can only have four voters in here. So I'm, I'm like, how do I, how do, I do this? So I put my, my entrance checklist outside under a canopy. It's a nice day. Give them all Australian ballots. Well, they are. They're going to get mailed anyway, but there's an entire population. You're not an officer. You're not an officer. You're not a person out there. So I'm going to have to have somebody stand out the door to make sure that hypothetically, if it's 10 and there's yeah. six workers, there can be no more than four voters in at the time. August 11th. Well, maybe somebody may be comfortable or something to, uh, to be there and, and one in, one out, one in, one out. And that's just going to the problem, and I agree with that. I just think in the back of my head for those people who don't want to do the absentee ballots, they're going to be waiting in line. Mm -hmm. And that's just, it is what it is. Yeah. I mean, we can't that's control why, that. I think you have to accept it. There's no different. I'm going to fit in all the 
back and I wind up sorry for somebody coming up. Yeah. 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 No big deal. And you can put tape on the on the walkway yeah. there for your distance. Yeah. Yeah. And that's yeah. 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 And then so a long time one time back. comes maybe next month at the meeting, and I don't know if there's something to think about, but I know I have said that's required in our office when it's more than one person. So down here during election day, and I sent an email to the election division to see what I can and can't do, but if the board says masks must be worn, then anybody coming in has to wear a mask. On the flip side of that, I don't know what the PPE is that's going to be provided to the towns from the state via the CARES Act. Um, they've talked about the hand sanitizer, and they've talked about the mask, and they've talked about you know, all kinds of stuff. I don't know what all that stuff is. So if we have the right thing, it's not going to be a big deal. But there may be people who don't want to work the polls that day because we can't ask people to wear a mask. And it won't be worse than that because you know, you're going to have to sanitize your pen. Oh, I know. Every, every forehead. I'm going to have to have somebody, that's all that they're doing is walking around sanitizing. Yeah. Well, you just spend money on a whole bunch of pens and give everybody their own pencil. Yeah. Take home pens. Yeah. I voted. Yeah. I voted. <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe that's right. Yeah, no, I'm going to mess around with trying to clean that sort of stuff. That's why I was That's right. So, that's right. so anyways. Those are just things well, that in about. It's one of the other things. And do you have any place talking you know, the drop off box? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> just Ron was here for something and ended up talking and somebody stopped to pay their their uh, you know electric bill. And so you realize they had to stop, they got out of the car, they walked up, they had to look at the people, they had to come sign here and put them sign and turn back out. You say, remember the good old days when there used to be mailboxes you could drive up to it yeah. and just stuck it in? that we need to do basically a drop box to be able to do that. And I think when it comes, because again, if everybody's mailed the ballot, they knew it, they still want to bring it in. But to do a drop box outside so that people don't have to get out of their car, you don't have to connect with anybody, you can just drive up and drop in your utility payment, drop in your credit. Okay. It's counting on all. <laughs> One person misses every year. I second that. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, that's what we have time to think yeah. about. It. Yeah. It's just all the things on the horizon that we need to, and in terms of how slowly but surely with the office and, and what, the, what the new normal is. But I'm already tired of it. Cambridge calls themselves digitally open. Everything they do is by fax or email or whatever. And I, I mean, I'm not going to go so far as to say that, but I, I'm always very careful to make sure that if it's not something that if somebody doesn't need to come in, I can help them get it in that way. I'm trying to do that. Right. It's, so, it's, it's just changing people's habits when they need to do that. So, yeah, that's what we do. Okay. Anything else? Greg for Kim? Great. No, but since I came down, I, I brought that contract with Lana. Oh. Okay. Because I have it. Okay. All right. Um, and can I leave this with you? And can you maybe take a moment to both of those up to my desk when you're done? This is that social details contract that I'm sure you're going to be talking about. Okay. Yes. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Ooh. Lucky number 13. Fire department stipend proposal. Okay. One of those guys can come in. You want to go see oh, if yeah, that's, that's right. How many? Yeah. Is there, are there only two of them out there? Um, one of you guys can come in. You're saying the phone? Come in before I finish in the other one. Call that phone number? Phone number? What number are you calling? What number are you calling? Oh, seven nine nine. Ah, oh, wrong number. Okay. <laughs> Oh, 
somebody just being there. Okay. Well, they got the right. Some guy need a carrier. Yeah, right now. Alex is on. <laughs> Quick. Yeah, <laughs> I just did it for him. I got it. <laughs> yeah, we're all set. Thanks, okay. Brad. Okay. You want to give us a quick recap yeah, on that? Yeah, sure. The, the, yeah, two things came in from Chief Webster on uh, stipend and hourly wage uh, increases. Uh, I think both of them came out of a fire officers meeting back in, I want to say October 2019, with anticipating that they'd be effective in <clears throat> January, which would be part of and I'm not clear about this part, when they'd be awarded, whether it was going to be awarded in July, whether a regular January to June time, or whether there'd be an interim sometime in January, then another one in July, but whatever. That, that was it. The, the gist of it is that there's some rounding up of their hourly rates based on the job position. Not that much, just almost like rounding up. It wasn't a huge increase or anything. Um, and some stipends that would be given out by rank. So the I think the chief was 750, the assistant chief was 500, and it depreciated a little bit for lieutenants. So that's that's been on the table. The board has said that they would look at it as late as um, uh, May meeting, I think. There was some commitment by the board to work on it harder and get it resolved. So that's kind of where we are tonight. Chief has asked, you know, and I, I think at this point it would be uh, for FY21, which would be starting July 1st, so that uh, the fire department submits for pay on July and January every year for their prior six months. So that's kind of where we're at right now. And the board, I don't, I don't know. And the total amount of money was like? It was 2250 20, right. if I'm remembering right. It was, it was a lot of money. And, and what? We board kept trying to figure out is is how do you um, looking at what other fire departments do at uh, whether you go to to stipends if you're paid every time you come in um, or and then that got us into the there's there's your whole roster but then there's how many it seems to be pretty much a core of you know, like 12 to 15 folks who are kind of, uh, that's really who does most of the work. And, and again, that may be <clears throat> the bigger conversation of sustainability of small fire departments. As more and more folks work away, um, if something happens most, you know, mostly during the week, just people aren't there, they aren't able to respond. It's not that they wouldn't, that they wouldn't respond when it's a weekend or an evening, it's that they aren't able to. So we, you and Ellie burned up a lot of coming up, trying to look at a variety of different ways and how to have this be, um, to have this be equitable. I think the, um, you know, the chief talking about here's all the work and here's all the paperwork he does and and um, mm, you. Yeah. <laughs> You're in, in, to some extent, you're talking to the you're talking to the wrong people here because we get a we get seven hundred and fifty dollars a year, and um, we put in lots of hours, too, so we appreciate it. Uh, yeah, that's right. Before that, so. um, you know, and and so it's not uh, a lot of these things are. Um, certainly, no, none of you have gotten into any of this for the money. There's none of us have gotten into any of this for the money. So try to figure out what's equitable for the folks that are doing the doing the most work is has just been um, there've been a lot of conversations. Um, I have in mind what I would do to resolve it right now, but I'm curious about the rest of you and what you would like to do. Well, I don't care. You're good opinion too. Yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> but just on the stipend, fire. Yeah. Yeah. 
I think a lot of it is because, well, maybe it probably does, but most of us have no idea what Chief Webster does. You know, I go by the station a lot of times, go back and forth, from the police station back and forth, and see Ed's truck parked up there, and once in a while I stop and shoot the shit with him and stuff. And I didn't realize, I know it's been said, but you know, after the fire, you can come, you can do your paperwork, you can clean up, you can do all this stuff. I didn't realize how much paperwork was done for a fire, especially a Structure fire, you know, you'll have to list uh, uh, the, the square footage of the house, the number of, uh, of uh, uh, rooms in the house, the upstairs, the downstairs, where the fire items, all this stuff. And that's a lot of research that Ed, I feel Ed has to do. And after he fought a fire, I don't know if I'd want to sit in a station and try to figure all that stuff out. And just looking at the departments. If we can pay the highway department a, a, a three hour, call it a or a three hour pay to come out if a tree come down or a culvert got plugged or something, I can't see no reason why for the fire a person shouldn't get paid for the time they're using to fill up paperwork. And, and I don't think that, that the $2,000 a year is going to be a big, big burden on the town. And, and the split that they came up with for other offers, because obviously, <coughs> it's a, I mean, you're right now we're saying, yeah, it doesn't matter who gets it, doesn't all fall on the chief, it falls on other people having to do a variety of different things. Right. But nothing I may lead on, instead of saying, go get the chief uh, X amount, get the assistant chief X amount, we can X amount, not for there. I, I, I give the chief $2,000. It's on your show, but you split it, who gets what? Well, that's where, that's where I was. I was, I was the stipend. You got a lot of other people that are doing the extra work. Should take the money and split it up between everybody. Well, that, that would be the, that would be the chief's choice. Well, I mean, you know, he is chief, but if you didn't have the Indians out there, Work wouldn't be getting done either. No, I understand that, but, but it, that's that's. Well, know. that's right. When you're saying leave it to the he to the to the chief to decide. Yes, <clears throat> right. I mean, he came in with a proposal, and I will assume that that proposal but was something. Proposal was for everybody. the first five, four or five people. Well, that's right, and we're just saying yes. instead of I would assume that those people approved it, and the rest of the apartment must have approved it as well. And I think part of for me, the issue was I just I just didn't know. So um, I think right the amount of money that they asked for, we just um, assign that to the chief, and they make the decision as to where it goes. And how long is it going to be before North High Park comes in with this, or how long is it going to be before Eddie Webster comes back for us again for more money? First of all, we asked North High Park right at the beginning. I asked them, I said, do you want to be included in this? And right, they, right and, there, right now. And, 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 right, and, and they went back and talked about it, and they said at this time they didn't. Because if we're going to, I, I feel very strongly, if we're going to do it for High Park, then we should, we should be offering the same thing to the North High Park. I don't, I don't have any problem. Well, that's going to happen. Well, that's, that's, and, and part that's of that coming back has more money, it'd be just, it's yes or no. Yeah. I think it's got to come through us. And Dave, the number was uh, 2,550 from Ed, not 2,020. Was that all the stipends or was that the raises? That was all the stipends for chief engineer, assistant chief engineer. Okay. So that was 750, 500 for those two. Captains were 400 and then lieutenants were 300. And there's three of them. So what is this? 2,550. <laughs> Well, I know that uh, uh, in the past uh, there's been a uh, talk about doing uh, physicals so that uh, it eliminates the uh, 
uh, liability for the uh, for the uh, town. They make sure everybody uh, is able to do perform their duties uh, on their island way that uh, that uh, uh, give you the stipend, but conditioned on that we uh, get the physicals done. Well, the, the physicals have been done this year because of the COVID-19, you know, game. We couldn't get into the doctor's office, so you won't see anybody unless it's one of the regular patients. Yeah, but uh, we, 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 there was allocated money, what, two years ago for that round? Uh, this is this is the second year. This is the second, second year. year. <laughs> so the money is there to do it. We do, we do have a place that will do it, at least I should think so will, and uh, it's the, the new camera. camera. Yeah. And I think it was like 25 or $50 a, a pop. The only thing was that they were going to require that the guy come in and have his blood pressure taken. And we talked about this at a prayer meeting and you're going to have to ask guys to take time off from work to go in. And I feel that they should get some kind of reimbursement for it because they're going to lose time at work. Well, Ed, let's, you and I can talk offline, but I'll bet you I can talk with a couple of docs and they can, you know, I can get them to do a Saturday thing or something like that to do a couple of Saturdays to make it, you know, to make it, uh, to make it easy for folks. And to, and to see what it would be, because you're right. I don't. There isn't any reason for folks to have to take time off work. I think we can. I think I can come up with a couple of docs and be willing to. And in the previous, the previous place, we had a man. We had physicals and stuff, and uh, the doctor came to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I think let's. You and I can talk offline. I think we can come up with something. And you're right. We may be able to get something that on a couple of Saturdays or something. That, you can go to the or, or maybe they would come over on a Thursday drill night. Yeah, yeah. 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 Let's see. Well, I'll, I'll, I can go to work on finding a couple of docs that are willing to do that. I'm sure. Um, how? Okay. So, how about a motion that we're just gonna we'll we'll assign the two thousand five hundred and fifty to the chief and let him. Split it up the way I will assume that it will be just like a report back how it ends up being divided, but that if they stick with that original way. With, with the condition of the, uh, once the physicals are complete or no? I, I, don't, I'm, I am very tempted to attach that because for yeah. me and my mom, it is about the physicals, but it I has been. They, they were, they, yeah, yeah, they are, and and this, you know, COVID has sort of messed up everybody and everything. So, at at this point in time, I won't attach them. But if physicals haven't transpired by next year, and I'm taking on part of that, I'm going to figure out how to do it. Now that's what goes on fiscal year 2021. Susan. Yeah. I got an idea. Okay. Give the officer the officer the stipend. And don't give them the raise that they want and give the younger guys a two dollar raise. They're not officers. They do all the work anyways, cleaning the hoses and stuff. So we'll give 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 the officers the stipend they want and leave the wages per hour where it is now and the firefighters give them a two dollar raise. They deserve something, more than fifty cents, twenty cents. Now, Rock, I don't want to disagree with you, but I got it in this case because this this is not an issue of the of the uh, the hourly rate. The stipend, if I'm not wrong, is an issue of extra work. You going to put in extra work if you don't get compensated for it, right? I think. Well, he's right. Right. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah, Roger on that was he was pointing out the same issue for the non officers too that they should be recognized too. So the, no, I know I'm just there's two two clearly different one for the officers, one for the non officers. Yeah. So that but yes. Well, I make a motion that we give the chief twenty five fifty. Yeah. 
Firefighters were current 1176 going to 1196. Okay. 20 cents. Roger, what what would you say they should go to? Give them a two dollar raise. Would you want to help fire? Uh, all the all the guys that don't get any stipend money get a two dollar raise. Okay. So what they're getting now? The lieutenant rate. That, that would be the lowest officer rate. So they'd match, basically. Okay. And do we have a guesstimate as to what this cost is? Uh, you're talking about a 10, 20 percent, 20 percent increase, plus or minus, so 4,000 bucks over the year. But I don't, I don't think that's the, I don't think that's the questions on the table. No, no, I, but. Let me see. Here's the, well, okay. Let's 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 try them separate. Okay. Right now we're just voting on the stipends. Yeah. All in favor of giving the stipend money to the chief? We can. Can I get a second? Huh? I can second. I second. Okay. To move it. All right. Let's, let's see. Let's see what happens with the vote. Okay. <laughs> all in all in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. 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 Okay. The motion fails. Was it rolling down now. <laughs> now we go on to. So I make sure those on the record there. Yeah. Okay. Two, three, fail. Okay. Got it. Okay. Where would you like to go from here? The people that were opposed to it, what would you like to do? If you could figure out, give him a stipend. And he can split that up between everybody. Everybody is involved in this, not just the chief, not fire chief, not the assistant chief, not the captain. Everybody, it takes everybody to get out there to do the job. Okay. That's to, where I am, and I think that's is that right. is that sufficient money? Is twenty five fifty sufficient money? Or do you just for a pool? <laughs> Everybody gets a little bit, you know how that goes. We're not saying everybody's out there doing it together. Everybody out there that's working is getting paid. We're not getting paid on 
the other stuff that we're doing. We've already been seeing, but everybody goes home and the clock stops, and we gotta stay there and do all this other stuff. We're not getting paid. The other guys are getting paid for what they're doing. Yeah, I remember that. There was two issues with the with the rate structure. You get called out, you get paid those hourly rates. The officers go back and they start to do the paperwork or the cleanup or you know even some of the training stuff. And then there was the no pay for training, which is a whole separate issue, which has gone back and forth over time. But right now there's currently no pay for hours spent on training. So those are the, kind of the three different balls that we're trying to juggle here because everybody looks at them collectively, but you're only talking about just the officer stipend at this point. Well, that, that's right. It didn't work. So, so now I'm saying with the three no's, what's up? Can, yeah, what's how next? We, can we get to yes at some form or other? The, can, Roger, right right now, Roley has said that the 2,550 just go and be split between everybody. My question was, is with that amount of money, is that enough, or should we increase the amount of money and have the chief split it up? And if we increase the amount of money, what should we increase it to? If we're going to split with everybody, maybe increase it to 3,500. Thirty-five hundred. Well, as long as everybody gets some, that's that's my. Well, that doesn't mean everybody's going to get it. Right. Something that. If, 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 if well, we can we can give it with the caveat that some everybody's going to get something. Correct. Yeah. How many hours? Yeah. Something happened here. Right. Okay. okay. It, it would. The proposal that came in would have been. Hey, you guys. I'm, I'm, okay. I need um, was for 2,550 to go for stipends. The increase, as your increase was for it was at two dollars for people, right? Yeah. No. 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 It wasn't. No, that was no. Uh, what What we wanted to do was before basically what the market Okay. And like for this chief, um, yeah, so I'm getting thirteen seventy nine. So yeah. it would twenty one cents for me, and I don't, I don't have a paper. Yeah, that's okay. And that was, all the way down yeah, yeah, that's right. Went all the way down through, and that's what Roger doesn't like. He thinks the other folks should get more money. That okay. Yes. How about the firefighters? How about the firefighters? Are they are they lower than my height here? Everyday white friends, or what I'll say, younger people. Uh, like I said, I didn't realize we were going to talk about this tonight. I didn't bring the paperwork, but I believe that you guys have been at slightly more. You get what? Twelve. What's your white friends get? Uh, well, Ron should be able to tell us. is current firefighter base 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 pay. Cadets get ten seventy eight. What, what if we did the 2550 stipend and uh, approve the, the firefighters to not have the tax guys? I think it's kind of my, my, my point of view. You know, it's not, not where you are. It's not fair. It's all volunteer. If everybody don't get something. <laughs> you're right. But Roger, would that work for you that if we make the pay the same as North High Park? Well, I guess that I I don't know what North High Park is getting. They're getting twelve bucks, right? I'm pretty sure. Just a second. We're, we're double we're double checking. We'll see what whatever it is North High Park gets, assuming that, <laughs> assuming it's more. We don't want to take anything away from. Them. I think I think as I remember from the chief, they pay the chief and assistant chief fourteen, right? Yeah. And the captains are getting three thirteen fifty. The tenants are getting 13 and the firefighters are getting 12. Yeah. That's all uh, right. So, what we'd be doing is I'm not, I'm not saying that this increase goes to the officers. You'd be getting a stipend instead as opposed to an increase. Am I right? Is that what we're thinking? Yeah, I see. Yeah, I, I have another question to ask. Was this was that was this uh, increase never to the stipend bottom front and the rest of the 
rest of the firemen or just just an officer thing here? Uh, the, the, the one the just for the rest, officer. The officer is not going to so. Was it brought up in front of the rest of the fire department, the firefighters? Oh, the during their, before they made the recommendation, you mean? Was it talked about by everybody? Yes. I don't, I don't, Ed, if it's an officer decision to make this proposal back in October, or was it the fire department's recommendation? The yeah, just the officers, Roger. Well, I don't feel that way. Everybody's part of that fire department, and I think it should have been brought up in front of everybody. See what, what your younger firefighters, they do a lot of the harder work, too, and to see how they felt about the whole thing. It's not just an officer fire department. The whole member fire department. Officers shouldn't be the only one that run it. They should have consultants from the from their firefighters. They're the ones that are under them, and it should be an honor to be a fire uh, an officer. Okay. And also carry additional work. Yeah. You know, I, I said it once and I'll say it again. I know you're shut down, but it's not about the pay the firefighters get. It's for the pay that the guys are doing extra. I'm not off the call. Off the, off the call. Right. Yeah. Right. But, but the sentiment is, if, let's see, is that unless the people down here get more money, and Roger's feeling yep. stronger than the 20 or 21 cents an hour that, that was proposed, then it isn't appropriate for the officers to get the stipend. Okay, so that's sort of that's where we are. So my question is, what do we need to give to the to the group down here so that these three feel okay about giving match not that part, because if we say we're gonna get two dollars more to me, not that part will come in and say hey, we're we're not really short. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I don't know if that's, I don't think that's a right interpretation. You know what I mean? But on the other hand, North Lake Park would, is added into their budget. We don't have to have your approval for what I pay my guys. So if I need to pay myself $10 an hour to pay my fire fortune, I don't need to tell them. That's the only difference. We're, we're not in comparison. But what Dave is saying seems like it makes the most sense if you bring your guys to meet my guy and yeah. then give your officers your stipend. Everything's down the line and you're paying your officers the extra duties that right. state sees on that fire. Yeah, I think I think that's what Roger, you got that? Does that work for you? So we pay we the officers get the stipend, but the the <laughs> the the non officers uh, get pay increase, so it's the same that they're the same as North Hyde Park. No? Yeah, I, I say the officers don't get it. They, they get their siphon. That's not what I said. And what I thought you were saying was everybody should move up the scale, like you're saying, to meet North Hyde Park, which means you're going to get paid well, for the He's going to move to 14. Your firemen are going to move up to North Hyde Park. And right. you're saying give them. The stipend, like I had asked for their extra time after the call. That, that was my. That's what I understood you said. Okay. Didn't we just vote on the stipend? Yeah, and it lost. It, it was defeated uh, two in favor, three against. Okay, so it's done and over with. Like, like David said, we voted on it, it's done and over with. Well, Susan's asking for an amendment to try it again. I'm not putting the amendment in. I didn't ask you to. <laughs> <laughs> Any, she hasn't gotten one yet. I'll put it in myself. <laughs> Sorry, it yeah, Rod, she was asking anybody for an amendment, Roger, not just you. Okay. But, but the proposal right now is to bring the, the regular firefighters up to the North High Park regular firefighters pay level, right? Talking about officers and everybody. Well, we're above, yeah. Hyde Park might be above Northside Park for 
officer. Mm -hmm. Wait, mm -hmm. hourly. No, I don't, I don't think it is. I think that's no. just that. No, I think it's to bring them all up. Okay. Okay. So we want to bring everybody up to. Okay. And that's how, like how much is that basically the same amount as the stipend? Well, right now, the chief will get 21 cent raise. Our chief will get 21 cent raise. It depends. Uh, yeah. Okay. Chief will get so I'm just going to Okay. Okay, so we bring everybody up to the North Hyde Park. So we've got everybody being paid the same. Okay, that's the motion on the table. And then. Uh, uh, well, that, that uh, wait, just a minute. Wait, thank you. I'll get us there. I'm trying to get us there. Huh? That's hourly. That's the hourly rate. Right, right. Right. You don't have stipends on the table right now. Dave, do you want to just do this part and then take another run at stipends? Yeah. Or time it together? Or let's time it together and go for it. No. Uh, it, it, it's two <laughs> different things. That's right. I agree. I agree. Just do your own Okay, so you may post it now. We'll see if we can get a second. Here we go again. Okay, so I'm bringing everybody's pay. I'm make a motion that everybody. Did you hear this, Roger? I'm hearing. Yeah. Can you hear me now? <laughs> <laughs> I make a motion that we bring High Park firefighters, equivalent per hour with North High Park firefighters. Okay. And allow the chief to get a stipend of 25.50 to be split up as he sees it for his people that work off a clock to right. get reimbursed. Okay, you got it? That's the same thing we had before. No, it isn't. We just increased everybody's pay. Mm -hmm. And put the stipends to pay for the for the officers' hours of. Have you figured out how much that's going to be for every? Was it five officers? It's it's yeah. not. It's if you're, if they're talking about ten or twelve cents, it's not. It's not. It's not even to four thousand probably. I'm just right. probably like thirty five hundred maybe. No, just bring the stipend up. It's going to be twenty five hundred, right? Yeah. Yeah, twenty five fifty yeah. is the stipend and amount. That's going to go between five guys. Not necessarily. Yeah. Officers yeah. will have six guns. But that's the officers split by the chief that he'll make a recommendation. The, the chief's stipend is that's either a group vote or a select board decision, I think. Well, I, I would like to know how much he's how he's gonna split that up between the six officers. Well, I think that it, to to solve that we should get a we can get a recommendation from the chief to come back to you as so you can give the final approval. Well, that's, yeah, that's a good idea. Well, we yeah, had asked for a regular rate, so it was 750 for the chief, 500 for the assistant, 400 for the captain, and 300 for each. And that's, that's even if you don't go out on a call, that's, that's every year. Well, that's for work that they do beyond the call. Which you know you're going to do because we're never going to have no fires. You hear that, Roger? Yep. Okay, so we're uh, two, four, we're talking maybe a total of six thousand dollars all together. No, no, no don't. Well, I'd probably thirty-five to four. Thirty-five. Okay. Okay. So we got it. All right. Let's see what happens again. Okay. You got you got what the motion is, Roger? Yep. Okay. All, all, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Anybody who's opposed? Aye. Aye. Nay. Aye. Nay, I mean. Hey, Roger, are you in favor or against the motion? I have to restate the question. Yeah. Roger, this is this is to bring everybody's pay equivalent to North High Park, so the two departments are the same, and doing the stipend monies for the officers in High Park. Nay. <laughs> I think 
So why don't we split it up and then uh, well, and, and build it? Uh, excuse me. <laughs> okay, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do a motion to just increase everybody's pay to North High, the same as North High Park. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 You there, Roger? Yeah. What are we doing? <laughs> This is just raising Hyde Park, everybody's pay to the, be the same as North Hyde Park. Just, that's just nothing to do with the stipend. From the Correct. Chief, yeah. Correct. Just the hourly. Yeah, just the hourly. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Okay, well, we at least got that much. <laughs> we, we have failed in the stipends, but there you go. <laughs> Okay. I was going to say, right, any other questions? Any concerning this part? We have a... No, I guess. It is what it is. It is what it is. Okay. You guys still uh, doing. Uh, very much. This weekend was the last weekend. Last weekend, more. Yeah. We figured that people are able to start gathering a little slower. So we're doing okay. All right. I think. Let me see. I know we have something we need to go to executive session about when. And in, do, I have, do we have any other fire stuff that we <laughs> the uh, the bill we want to talk about that that's certainly public the sprayer oh yeah which we which we now somebody covered the cost of somebody covered the cost of mm -hmm. somebody made a contribution to pay the cost of the piece of equipment. <laughs> Which my thought was, I think we should let the world know that we're going to need some new equipment and see if we can get somebody to buy that. <laughs> is, 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 is it in there? <laughs> we, can we find out who gets the donation? Um, unless they requested that it be anonymous, which people don't know to do when they give money. I don't, and I don't know. Kim just told us today, so I don't know any more than that. Well, whoever it was, I Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> Can I ask a question? Sure. What was the big deal about buying that? If it was in my pocket. I heard there's a big controversy over it. You uh, heard? A dollar. You heard? Yeah. I don't even know what it is. Tell you the truth. Oh, this $500 machine that decontaminates our trucks and our gear and our station for building. I said pay it right from the beginning. Did right. I say that? Yeah. We, here's here's the. We've had some issues at the end of the year, and it's the fire department is not the only guilty guilty group of uh, of buy, Usually, if things are 500 or or more, the select board likes to know before money gets spent. Um. And there have been some issues with fire department spending that has been like, what's it for? And then we have to get it checked out after and not knowing what it is. So it's it's uh, as frequently the issues in life are, it's about communication and what's going on. And then unfortunately there gets to be, um, I don't think, I don't think small towns are the only place it happens, but small towns are really good at little stories get going about what people are saying and people get all snarked up about nothing. But, 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 but people get all snarked up, and then people are snarked up because people are snarked up, and it's like, why? And it's I frequently end up exactly where Dave is going. Man. What are we talking about? <laughs> what what have I missed? Um, and I think part of the concern is um, sometimes when there's money made available, like with COVID and things, are people, um, our organizations, again, we're all guilty of it. 
are we really, because it's like, oh, it's free money. Well, some, it's money coming from some place. It's some tax dollars money. So is that the, was that the best thing to do? Was there a less expensive way to do it? Was there something else that you can do? And that's why when people are spending something like that, to be able to ask those questions before you spend the money. Or when you come in and you say, gee, we'd like to spend this, and here's what we need, and here are the options, la, 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 la. We say, oh, yeah, OK, that makes sense, great. But it's when you get, uh, you know, it's it started, it starts with it was a lot more than $500, and it could be done much more inexpensively, and do we really need to do this? And, uh, you know, I couldn't answer well, any of those the, questions because I didn't know anything about it. To answer Gage's question and, and the rest of you, what we did is we bought a face break, and uh, I can tell you what the formula is, but there's a mixture that we make up and we use it to decom the patient. And it's also usable for any cancer uh, work. It's, I'm sure most of you know firefighters stand a 2 to 4 percent greater chance of catching cancer than the general public just because of the job they do. So uh, this, this system that we're using is the same system that the city of Burlington is using, the city of South Burlington, and Stowe, and there was a couple other ones that I know of, but I can't remember where, where they are now. And uh, so basically what it is, is it, it puts out a, not really a dry mix, right? Right, it's a dry mix. Yeah. So we can like ink on the inside of the trucks, and what we do is we spray the inside of the trucks, the caps and stuff where you can't put water because of the radio equipment and stuff. And we ink on the, the entire apparatus room, the office, uh, the communications room, the restroom, the training room, and, the, and my office. And we do that once a week. If we come back from a call where it's a major call, we do it again that after that call. If it's a minor call where we really didn't do, you know, have a lot to do, uh, we still go through a hand hand rub down of, of the interiors of the trucks and the steering wheels, the transmission, you know, controls and, that, and all that. In terms of drawing this, yeah. So, so it's a special gun. It's not just a spec. It's a main sprayer. Just a regular tip. Yeah. 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 So it's a regular spray sprayer that the dad would use. Uh, uh, not for a house. Oh, it's like, like, like a mic? Yes, something like that. You put it in the five-gallon bucket. Ah, uh, it's got holes in it. Yeah. So what you're spraying out is, is dry when you spray it out? I'm trying to understand it's a, the dry right mess that comes out. It's mixed with 1.7 gallons of water to a half a cup of hydrogen peroxide. It's very, very funny. Almost like a fog. Almost like when we get the heavy fog. If, you, if you've seen any pictures in the news of um, disinfected buildings and stuff, that's basically what it is. Okay. It, looks, okay. it looks a little bit like a fog coming out of it. And that allows us, like, like our turnout gear is all lined up next to where the trucks are. So that when the guy does it, he just walks down and he does each compartment, each uh, gear compartment, so that the gear is being decontaminated. Uh, we need to then, like I said, we do the inside of the cabs of the trucks and stuff, uh, and all the other rooms in the building. So it's supposed to be good for fighting the COVID-19 plus some of the stuff that we've run into that is cancer causing. Brad, can that be used with the fast squad too? Yes. And are you using it? I mean, I would. If the members yeah. feel that they need to contaminate uh, their bags or whatever, yes, they can come in and go to the office and do that. Okay. Yeah. Cool, good. There are departments all around. It started over in Des Moines, Idaho, where they, some of the firefighters were experimenting with it, and that's the percentage they came up with where they were getting a, basically almost like a dry, dry fog 
cannot this whole this bit with COVID nineteen and, and all that and a bunch of other diseases and like Eddie said also helps with the fight against cancer. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Um let me what do I have in here? Um I'd like to just since I since I've been on the board have listened to um, I, I, I think maybe a, a fundamental frustration for select board members is we're really pretty limited in how we can limit tax increases for services to folks in town because it's your school budget that takes up 75 80 percent of the you know of the taxpayer dollars and, and, and forever since I think probably forever with schools, but certainly since there's been a statewide property tax, um, select boards all over the state knock themselves out trying to save a couple of thousand dollars and school budgets, and, and with their contracts, and it's not a good or bad on the school budgets, it's just it's the giant piece of the town budget and taxes that that we as a select board have no input, no control. It's it's totally irrelevant, and it's really um, it gets very frustrating when when people complain about the taxes, and it really it really isn't the fire services, the EMT, and the roads that they're complaining about. It's really it's it's a lot more about schools, and and because in any given town, maybe even if you throw in the grandparents, maybe 35 percent of the population has kids in the school where everybody is impacted by your you know by your by your town budget. So the you know so you can look at what do you do with the roads or what do you do with your fire departments and what do you do with the EMTs, what do you do with law enforcement? People end up saying you know they want and if anything they want more of those services. So in terms of trying to figure out with the with the fire departments, with Hyde Park and North Hyde Park, from what you do, and I remember we looked once and thought, well, oh man, the ambulance services are costing so much, and maybe we should see if we could go with somebody else. And you find out, gee, we're really we get a pretty good deal. What I would like to ask, I haven't said anything to anybody else on the select board. This, I'd like to get together a group from Hyde Park and North Hyde Park. I got a couple of people in the community. Oh, if Carol's still on, I'd recruit Carol Farno into this one. Um, to, to get together as a working group together and look at, we know equipment costs coming up, everything that's coming up, to look at, we're trying to do the same thing with law enforcement, look at a five, a seven year plan. What's sustainable? What can we do? You know more costs are coming. Um, it's, it's difficult to have volunteers. What, what would we all, sitting down and working together, come up with a plan for how do we have what's sustainable, how does it work, how do we save money, if here are the costs we see coming, how do, right now, how do we start saving money and figuring out how, how to operate well so we can do it. Um, because I think it's, it's, as always, going to, the, going to the folks that are on the front line, you'll have your perspective and here's what you need, but we have our perspective and we're trying to deal with taxpayer dollars and that sort of stuff. So what do you think about getting together a group that has both North Hyde Park and, and, and Hyde Park together and say, okay, here's what, it, here's what it looks like, here's the future, here's the issues we see, here's what we'd like to do, and instead of, instead of stumbling from budget to budget to say, here's, here's, here's a long-term plan and here's what we think makes sense well, for our communities. The department has been once so far and discussed some things. Uh, again, it's just preliminary. And I don't know, we, we, we need to set a separate meeting. No, I think we're going to have some more ideas. Yeah. But we, we, we are looking at it ourselves. Um, I don't know what else you want for a committee. Um, well, I think maybe we can pull in some people that have knowledge and experience locally but aren't necessarily on the department, but but are familiar and just you know just bring some experience and some thoughts because sometimes no matter what the topic is, if you're really into it, there may be something that's really obvious and really simple, or maybe so out of the box that you'd go, my God, I'd never think of that. 
but it turns out to be, you know, not a bad idea. Because I, I don't doubt at all that everybody wants the same thing, and that's to provide high quality services to our, you know, to, to residents. But everybody, I mean, we all pay taxes. We all know taxes are high, and uh, I don't, I don't see them going down anytime soon. And, and who knows what happens? What the long term implications? You know, to the economies and people's jobs, so locally, what it's going to mean for for folks and staying employed, and what's going to happen. We don't know, but we can't. We just got to go ahead and, and make some plans anyway and see what happens. But I'd like if you start doing that, I I would be happy to join that group because again, the, the advantage I come in with is no knowledge. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have a lot of preconceived ideas about what you need for equipment or don't need for equipment or what works and what doesn't work. And as I say, and I'd really like to ask Carol Farno to join the group too because she's she comes in with a very different perspective, but but very really aware of, of the needs and, and how things and how things are working. And just sort of figure out some times and set some times and do it on a regular basis. Because if you do things and if you don't set a regular time to do the meetings, then it's sort of like us in the stipends. Four months disappears and you haven't gotten around to it. And that would save you on the preliminary uh, uh, talking when you come here. Well, it's already been discussed and you have a representative on the board that can uh, add to it. And, you know, yeah, but isn't that why we have the liaison so we can? Well, you can roll this. Well, anybody, anybody can come. I mean, you know, I, I do mean, my only thing with that is, is I can see maybe I am one or two outsiders to it, but if you add too many to it, it just do the thing. I mean, my idea is they have two chiefs, we have two chiefs. We can sit down, come up with ideas, bring them into your added on group so that we all have a discussion about them. People yeah, that that, that ten people that are trying to save money in taxes. I mean, that's what a cluster sitting in that room trying to come up with ideas. Well, you don't. You have four people that are trying to manage and run the board. You're going on the assumption that the goal is to save money, and that's right. not a valid assumption. But it can be. It can be. It can be for people. Well, yes, right. Save money. So the four of us are sitting down and we run this to your extra people. It's ideas that we come up with trying to. To do things and make together. Okay, that 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 works for me, but it's. Uh, I hate to sit in a room with ten other people trying to tell us how we need to run and go. Yeah, that's obvious. Most <laughs> well, No, yeah, I got uh, oh, Trust me, as we sit here all the time doing that. No, you're right. Sure, you come up with some ideas, but have but then give me a time frame as to when you're going to do that. So when do you want to have? Have a proposal that you come to a group with, with the select board and a couple of other people to, to have a conversation. So that would just be one meeting where you folks already have a collective, not as a select board meeting, but as a, okay, here's what we're thinking. Right. So, well, you look at like future purposes, like new purposes. That would well, well, I'm looking at the whole thing. The future future purposes purchases are definitely a biggie. You know, so could buy. You know, summer's coming, who knows what's happening. Say the, the middle of September, beginning of October. Yeah, this is you don't, but it's, it's sort of come back in that time period and say where have you gotten? You don't have not 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 expecting an end result in the four months, but it's sort of like okay, so where are you? I got to go. So well, and then so that that group of people can become knowledgeable, and and that group starts thinking about well, I wonder what's happened there. Can you know, and could potentially then be of help to you in just in getting more information. So if we could in three or four months, and then bring you and Carol into it like you wanted. Yeah, to. couple and roll it, whoever, right? And say, okay, here's here's what we thought about so far. Yeah, so far yeah, yeah. I'll say, oh yeah, well, how about this? Or have you thought about this? And I say, okay, where do we go from there? But just sort of take some time to build it because you're right, you're not gonna not well. Right. If you can come up with how to solve all these problems in four months, God bless you. 
I will put you on the select board and you can take care of everything. <laughs> <laughs> Even better, we'll put you on the school board. <laughs> well, that's it. We saved you $2,200 and whatever. <laughs> 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 that work for you? Yeah, someday, yeah, again, yeah, yeah, the sort of the, the only know that run, get it down, and we'll, yeah. September. Yeah. Stack it September. Stack it September. Stack it September. You know, we can shoot for that. And yeah, and just you, you can just see how far you are. You know, it doesn't. It's not. It's not like I don't mean this is a competitive thing at all. But I think if we don't, as with anything, if we don't set ourselves some timelines, then the time just disappears, and we haven't got and we haven't gotten around to it because everybody gets busy. But I think these. I, th I think we need, to, we need to do the same thing with the law enforcement and sustainability. It's, you know, uh, yeah. But what, whatever, just pick, we can just get close and let Ron know, and we can do it. Find a time that works for everybody, and we'll do it. And see if we can get some good long-term planning going on for everybody. Okay. Yeah. Anything else on fire departments? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one thing I would like to ask Susan is yeah. if we have any funds left this year, do we transfer them to next year? I would say only with a select board assignment vote. What's that? Yeah, we usually we we try to avoid the situation. Sign it. Yeah. He, the departments don't do that, but this you get a recommendation. Yeah, which is what is asking them to go forward. Yeah, that's what we usually do. We don't want people to be in a situation where they feel you get to the end of the year and you're trying to. One example is, is we haven't done our annual pump testing because of the COVID, and I can't I could get the guy here to go on the first of July. Oh, all right, so it's going to roll over. Yeah, that's what right? yeah. yeah. Well, we'll do when we get all the money. We'll do it. But yeah, I'd say. I mean, right now, sure. And I'm not sure how much. I'm doing. Yeah, Allison confirmed the overall budget too. That's the other. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the other kick kicker to that. If the whole budget's overspent. You don't have the money to sign. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 right. And it just depends with Allison. If if the budget was already overspent, then we'd just be going into next year's budget anyway to do it. So you just. She hasn't, she hasn't finished all of that yet. Well, we She's haven't. Yeah, that's that. the first time I heard that request. Right. But, but yeah, certainly if the money's there, right, we'll, we'll just roll it. Yeah, I expect one special meeting because the, the union probably will ask for another meeting in the next two weeks. So as long as we get to it before July 1st, we'll right. have okay. potentially another night like this with the assignments on it. Okay. All righty. Okay. You look good in that mask, Rick. I knew you could wear one. I wish I had a colorful one. Well, let's look at that care of that. <laughs> so that's it, or we got something else? Well, we need that. That's up to you. Yeah, you invited Ed and yes. Brad, and then yeah, the, uh, we have like two quick little things I see. Picked up on that we didn't get to yet. I've been sitting here since four o'clock. <laughs> we have to walk around. So I know we we need to talk with Ed and Brad. Should that be executive session? We should do that last, then I can boot off the phone. Okay. okay. All right. Go ahead, Just a second. What are our little um, policy attention written policy? What else do we need to do? Uh, you want to talk about uh, delay tax payments or not? We can do that at the next meeting if you want, but that was something you mentioned earlier about whether that's going to be an August. Okay, yeah. Extend the August 31 or is that? I think yeah. that's what you're asking about. You know, we pushed out the first tax payment a little bit because we didn't know when we were going to get right. it. Well, it looks like we're going to get it in time, but there's some other complications. So can we just send you all the other complications that are potentially there that you might want to push it out some more? My thing is that particularly. Well, she want to push it out. Well, she that not even sure. It's just it, it has to do with homestead. And I'm going. You know, we did okay on this tax payment. Let's just let's just 
push it out a little bit, give people a little more space. Let's just leave it where it is. Yeah, let's, let's, not, just, let's not follow the government rules. Let's not make it an a issue until it's an issue. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. It's sort of like, okay, I think, I think, because there may be more work coming in on him, folks, they have to do with right. tax rates and stuff. So we need a motion they, to leave they, it where it is. No, 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 we just need to leave it where it is. It's just a discussion yeah. item. Yeah. 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 Do you hear that, Roger? Yes. Yep. Just, we're just, we're just, we're just leaving the tax, the tax bill doing what it's doing. We aren't moving it right now. Uh, the second thing is, Kim had a, a recommendation to uh, have an end of probation. Uh, uh, Hourly right. wage adjustment for yes, Kristen Langlois, who successfully completed her probation, and Kim was recommended fifty cents, uh, 50 cents uh, which is in the it's in the budget because we had Don's rate yeah. in the budget. Made a motion for that. Yeah. Now, oh, this for discussion here. Yep. Uh, now I thought. Here we go. Never in trouble. We thought. <laughs> I thought when we first started this, with people getting done and hiring people and, and coming on. That that was going to be a 32-hour job unless that person took over the listers thing for the extra eight hours, which made it a 40-hour job. But it looks to me we got a 40-hour job plus the lister veterans. And I think Ron can go back and see the minutes and, and do that. Am I correct in saying that? Right, is going to check. That's where I think you get. That's where we were getting the money to pay for it. Right. So I'm not having to pay that. That's right. We get thirty hours. That's when we do listener job and we get forty hour job. Now, you want to be the thing? You pack in my pocket because now you got a forty hour job and a listener job. Yeah, if it's got an update from Kim on where that where that's at. Yeah, yeah, because the idea was that she'd be there for presidents. Now, June. The, change that happened, which we weren't expecting, was that Matt Reed, who's the elected mm -hmm. officer, elected official, has said he won't be able to put the hours in. So that forced us to have Julie come back and basically do the work that Matt was going to do. So there's been no increase, per se, because it would have been either the elected person doing the work or, or in this case, Julie's doing that work. Matt's not getting paid. But Julie's paid. Julie's getting paid. And, what? She, and, and, and she's getting the extra eight hours. But she's going to move out. No, so there was always going to be a paid lister person. Right, but there was always going to be a paid lister person, but there was only going to be a 32 hour job, too. Not a 40 hour Well, no, that's the question for Kim. That's what I mean. We have to ask that question. I'm just saying Julie's only doing four hours, three hours a week. So she's trying to get the basic listing stuff done and supposedly sitting down with Matt and Kristen to get them ramped up. So that's the question for Kim. Where are we tonight? Are we still on Yep. Yeah, yeah. So that's the, que that's the question. That's more of a question for Kim. Right? That's right, because Kristen is learning it as well. Okay. Yeah. That is happening. So, and there was that one change. So I just want to let you know that we thought Matt was going to come on, and he said, "Can't, can't yeah. do it." So we gonna have to wait on, on the motion. Or... Yeah, you can wait and just. Yeah, you can wait and get the clarification from him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Just we just need a retroactive date if, if it get, yeah. if it gets approved. Yeah. Okay. And that's the same thing for the for the fire department um, wage adjustments. You want that effective. Uh, July 1, so that when they submit their time in July, they have the adjusted to match. Yes. Rather than wait yes. six more months. I would say yes. yes. Okay, so I just want to make sure that's clear. Right. That's right. Yeah, no, that's right. Okay. You all right with that, Roger? Yep. Okay, so that. Uh, <laughs> two other quick things. Uh, Mr. Bartlett up on Route 100. Yeah, yeah. Signed his paper, gave us the hundred dollars today. So, have <laughs> Susan needs to sign this okay. as uh, initially each page. As hey, Roger, did you hear that? Oh, he's, he's reading it back. Yes, he yep. is. He signed the agreement and gave us the hundred dollar deposit, which gives him till August 
Ooh, what's the date in August? Someday in August to get the rest of the money together. Oh, okay. So <laughs> then he's going to take care of the water then, I take it. He's going to take care of everything, apparently. Yeah. yeah. All right, so I'll just hang on till August. <laughs> uh, the last one we talked about the roundabout maintenance plan and Brian I've been sending stuff to Brian but we haven't had a chance to talk the state's trying to get some of the state issues resolved that Jane Brown yeah. she, she's trying to do something with her supervisors and I just want to let you know that we're still trying to figure out how to piece something together and we're not quite getting that what's the sewing package together they won't even give us no sewing well, we're, 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 we're working on the <laughs> the V-Tran structure right now. So. Did you just notice I went up there and cut that last week? Was that um, I haven't been in town. <laughs> <laughs> somebody said they saw somebody out there, but I don't know nothing. I don't want to know anything. <laughs> I know we don't have signs for anything. What's that way? Well, Anyway, so I just want to let you know that Brian Chackett and I just were trying to monitor that process to see if there's an opening for some final plan, and there is no final plan at this point. That's all I got. Mr. Jones, I heard that Brad signed over the 909 signing seal. You did? How's that coming in? Whatever you want to do, what your plan is on doing. Well, I have since signed it over to another officer. Um, however, if I was still adjourned to it last night, I wouldn't do it. Say it again. I said I have signed it over to another officer. However, as of tonight, after the site can go going down, I wouldn't do it. Okay, so who's the officer in charge? Kill Mother all and I are heading it up. Um, they just place the order for the rest of the sign for all the center of the road, all the side roads off of it, and into North High Park, Perry uh, Street and North High Park Road. So um, that will be coming in on this year's budget. So we'll spend the 3000 yeah. on that. Yeah. And July 1st will be good for another, yeah. another round. So we should. So everything from the Johnson the Pipe Park line to Centerville by the end of the summer should be all done. And all Route 15 is all done. And Route 100 to the line as well. Yeah. And then once this year's. I'm just leaving Garfield site. Yeah, the East, um, McKinnistry Hill, Center Road, and Garfield. Yeah. And that will be it. Perfect. Thank you much. Well, I'm in the village of Pipe Park. We were able to tackle that this summer, but with the project, water line project going on, and that oh, yeah. later, we would wait. Yeah. So we're going to do everything in the town and then come back into the village. I'll tell you, you learn the value of those signs, and I know you know they're put in for fire and rescue and stuff. But this mask project that we did, delivering yeah. masks. <laughs> I tell you, I see none of it. Oh man, I'm <laughs> where they where they aren't trying to drive by and see the numbers on the mailboxes and sometimes they're not there. Yeah. It's just like okay, I need some I need some interesting new turns. Of course, there's not a lot of traffic out there, so it's like okay. Right, right it out at night. Yeah, oh yeah, right. True. I tell you, some sometimes they're on the mailbox, sometimes they're on the nine one sign. Yeah, we'll see. Oh yeah. Or not at all. Yeah. Yeah, they're all, all over the place. Okay, thank you, guys. Okay. That's all I have. Okay, that's it. Okay, we can do the other stuff. And now I think we just need to go into a brief executive session and talk with them. We need to approve the minutes, do we? Oh, minutes? He's calling out minutes as needing to be done. Well, that, that's right. We're going to go. Well, we can do this. If you guys don't mind waiting another five minutes to get this stuff done. But so we need to tell Roger, we need to have a conversation with uh, with Ed and Brad about something. Oh, okay. Okay, but let's get you right. Let's finish up the other stuff. Sign. It's like more sign. Yellow tabs. Okay. Okay, here we go. Okay, here we go. I'll sign these two and then ship them over to you. Yeah. I've seen them all. 
Roger, we're signing things right now. Yeah, Roger, I don't think these just came in tonight. There are town orders that the board's looking at, so you're you're not going to be part of this if that's okay, or do you want somebody to review it? Out of state. Look on your phone. They're on your phone, Roger. <laughs> I know. Yeah, they're on, they're on your smartphone, Roger. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, those are they are, aren't they? Okay, so we need a motion to accept the town orders. And then we'll do the minutes. Okay? Second. Okay, all in favor of accepting the town orders signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Yep. Yep. Okay. There. Okay, then um, the minutes. Everybody looked at them. Need a motion to accept them. You have the dates for the record. Uh, 518, 525, 601, and 602. Thank you. So moved. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Abstain from uh, the first two, 61, 62. Yeah. Right yeah. You can't blame me for those, huh? No. no. Well, I think before 6 1, I'm not going to do it. Well, I don't know if that's true, but we can't blame you. <laughs> um, okay, now with that. Wait a minute. What? There's a Brian Meddy. Yeah, I'm just going to say we need to go into executive session. We're out of executive session. Um, we didn't make any decisions. There aren't any motions that we need. And we're, uh, I guess, look for uh, Roger. You have anything you want to add? Oh, I'm good. You're good. Well, now, when when do you go in for your surgery? Next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. And when do they expect to throw you out? <laughs> uh, I'll be in Texas care for two days. I'll probably be home by Saturday, the okay. 27th. Okay. Make it. Good luck, old oh boy. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. We'll get you. We'll we'll get that iPad going so when you get home and we can get your blood pressure right up there. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> Test out the procedure. <laughs> okay. Take care. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay. We're out of here.